Welcome to Capital One Bowl Media. You are watching the RL Carriers New Orleans Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. And what a sight for the pole position of the FBS Bowls this year. The site of seven Super Bowls. The Mercedes Benz Superdome, Troy, and North Texas get together this Saturday afternoon. 40 FBS Bowls. 34 on our ESPN networks leading up to the crown jewel, the national championship of the college football playoff on January the 8th. Thank you for joining us, Jason Benetti, Kelly Stauffer, Chris Button is down on the sideline, and tis the postseason, partner. It is. Are you excited? You have to be excited. Uh, we're in the leadoff spot, and to me, what we've seen when we've been here are exactly why all these bulls exist. These players are really excited to get a play on the field that Drew Brees plays on. Outstanding stuff. And specifically, if you're a fan of a team that's not in a bowl, there's some hope from both of these teams. When their coaches got here, they were well out of bowl territory. You know, Jason, what's interesting is you're going to hear a lot about the the DNA of the air raid offense and the influence of Mike Leach in this game. Neil Brown is that guy that he comes from that offense and he's chosen to continue to call plays for his team. He's still the head coach, but he calls plays. Picked a very good defense. Vic Conan is doing a great job on the defensive side. And then Seth Luttrell on the other side, same offensive scheme, really, but he doesn't call the plays. Graham Harrell, great quarterback in the system, calls the plays. So Seth Luttrell chose to do it a different way. But this is the message from both of them. Yeah, we're familiar with one another, but it's all about the players. It's about the players executing today. Those that do it well will win this game. Question about those players is who's playing running back for each team? Chris Button, what's the answer? Well, both they're dealing with some injuries. We'll start first with North Texas. They will be without their top running back, Jeffrey Wilson. He suffered a foot injury. This is the third straight game that he will miss. Seth Luttrell telling me he was hoping that he would be back in time, but he was not willing to risk it. Now for Troy, it is questionable whether running back Jordan Chun will play today. He to see. He told me that he was questionable. He tried to give it a go during warm-ups. Neil Brown telling me that he would leave the decision up to Chun, and he still was not sure just a couple minutes ago if he would be able to give it a go today. That's a guy with 10 touchdowns for the season and could break the Sun Belt rushing touchdown record. A senior, his final game. If it's his call and he can possibly get out there, you would imagine he would make it. But the guy you'll be seeing instead is backup Josh Anderson. If Chun can't get out there, is also a pretty talented guy. Yeah, cat. there isn't any question. And Anderson actually brings a little different skill set, a little more speed, kind of quick twitch type of thing. And, and Chun missed two games. And so Anderson has had some really good run, and he's played really well when he's gotten the opportunity. Saw the Troy sideline bouncing up and down. North Texas ready to go to Troy and North Texas, Sun Belt and Conference USA. They're pretty jacked to be in the French Quarter. They ought to be. And these play, it was interesting. It, they get to practice here as well, which was an interesting thing. And so many comments about this is where Drew Brees plays. That's what these games are all about. Troy will have it first. North Texas deferred. These are two of the top offenses in the country, averaging about 66 points per game combined. So we could have some volcanic work by the offenses this afternoon. FBS Bowl season is underway as Trevor Moore boots it to the end zone and Marcus Jones, the dynamic freshman for Troy. And if you're looking for a big moment for Troy, it was September 30th in this very state. Not a good start for LSU. Field goal attempt for Troy. It's the teams were already in the locker room. Did he get it? Anderson taking the wind out of this place again. Edling got rid of it. It's intercepted. Troy is going to win the football game. A remarkable win. How good is that? And we we talked about Chun may or may not play today. 30 carries a buck 91 against LSU in that upset win.
He is out on the first play as Brandon Silver has had Josh Anderson next to him, and Sam Letton, the sophomore, makes the opening grab. And you're going to see Troy go fast. When they're in rhythm, they're going to go as fast as they possibly can. Obviously, an air raid characteristic as well offensively. Senior quarterback Silvers to the sideline and a first down for the Troy Trojans. Damian Willis with the grab. And Brandon Silvers is a prototypical size for a quarterback. 6'3", 220, and lively arm. Sometimes his accuracy can come and go a little bit, but there certainly isn't any doubt about his arm strength. He had an amazing freshman season in terms of accuracy as Anderson keeps his feet across the 40-yard line on his opening carry. And Anderson brings a little bit more speed than even Jordan Chun does. And so there's a little bit of a different angle if you're trying to tackle this guy defensively. One of the team leaders, Anderson, a very spiritual young man. And Brandon Silvers told us yesterday, even if he fumbles, you can't get mad at him. He's such a good guy. The tailback for Troy as McCormick loses a yard on second down. And so that's what you're going to see, 11 and 12 personnel, which simply means single back, a couple of tight ends at times. They, Troy will bring a more two running back presentation at times, and the run games in this air raid style is the difference. Both Neil Brown and Seth Luttrell run it more in a two back concept at times more than the true air raid passing tree would show you. Notable though, Kel, this Troy team is down a couple of wide receivers. Trey Eford, the freshman, very talented, will not play. And DeAndre Douglas was injured on the opening kickoff as a flag comes in. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, number 11, five-yard penalty, still third down. That's a senior receiver, Tavares McCormick. And Jason, this is who North Texas is defensively. Troy Reffitt runs the Rocky Long, clear back at New Mexico, the 3-3-5, and Rocky Long is still doing that. Essentially, you have your nickel defense on the field all the time, and it's multiple, a lot of different pressure looks and bringing people from different sides, and it's all about creating some negativity offensively to get in third and a passing down like they've achieved right here on this first drive. Here comes some heat. They bring five on Silvers, who had the requisite time to get the first down to Damian Willis. It's a gain of 20 for Troy. That was a terrific throw and catch. Damian Willis just comes inside on man-to-man -man coverage. Single high safety, safety man-to-man -man underneath. And Brandon Silvers just gets across the face of the defender. And then Brandon Silvers throws it in a tight window. Willis just gets open from getting inside that man-to-man -man coverage. And the quarterback, Silvers, throws it in a really tiny window. You heard the official announcement that there was another Troy injury on that play. John Johnson, the senior receiver out of Troy, Alabama, was dinged up. So... They might need to figure out whether or not DeMarcus Ware has some eligibility. Yeah, no See kidding. if he can play a little receiver for him today. They're down a bunch of guys in terms of the wide receiving core. This is a run straight up the gut for Caleb Barker, who checked in for Silvers on that play. Chris. Well, DeAndre Douglas is in the medical tent right now. They're looking at his right leg. He was in some obvious pain, could not get off the field on his own. As soon as I know more, I'll let you know. Chris, thank you. It's uh, Douglas injured on the kickoff. Johnson injured a couple plays ago. Silver is back in. Off play action. And a diving grab by Willis. Somebody's going to have to catch the ball. It's that cat. It might as well be Willis. And that was a terrific adjustment on the football. It was a double move off the play action, trying to get a shot play down the field. And it was well covered initially on the vertical part of it. But the adjustment by Willis and then the throw by Brandon Silvers was very, very good. A young man who went to junior college after being recruited by Troy originally. 
Willis. Silvers to the end zone and out of bounds. Sam Letton just short of the goal line. And yet again, Troy ends up at the one yard line. And Letton is one of those extra bodies that's typically brought in to be more of a blocker, but I think that ball's going to be about the half yard line. Letton steps out of bounds. You can see right there. Troy has had quite a long season in terms of getting close to the goal line but not in and Neil Brown was laughing about that that Silver's touchdown number is actually lower than it should be because of so many guys stopped at the one yard line yeah, about a half dozen of them right and that was something that was interesting not the explosive numbers that you're used to in the pass game for Troy, Troy. their first time out of the half time out Troy 30 seconds in length but Damian Willis is going to have to take up some of the slack with Eford and Emmanuel Thompson both out for Troy today. And Willis is a big body guy that makes some really good adjustments. This was going to be a vertical route on the post corner move covered vertically and then the quarterback and the receiver have to be on the same page. Willis bends it flattens it out to the outside and Brandon Silvers finds him. Brandon Silver is a young man who broke Sam Bradford's completion percentage for a freshman his freshman season at 70 and a half percent. Incredible. incredible and what you see out of Troy is typically you see him passing for first downs and they typically run for touchdowns. But last year, there were a lot more explosive plays for touchdowns in that pass game. And you talked about it, about a half dozen opportunities to score through the air were tackled on like the one yard line. It's just one of those anomalies. But rest assured, Brandon Silvers can throw the ball. He had kind of an evolving door at that wide receiver position, maybe lacked chemistry at times. But right now he has great chemistry with Willis. He's one of those kids you were talking about who is a huge Saints fan, wants to meet Drew Brees one day. And with an opening drive that Drew would be proud of, capped by a touchdown for Anderson. When you script an opening drive, Jason, to start a game, it looks like this. And it looks like they are going to try and make it an 8 nothing game, at least for the moment. They now certainly gave the impression, almost like a swinging gate type of formation. And what you do is you see if the defense adjusts to that, and North Texas did. So now we're just going to get the old school extra point, apparently. One of the hallmarks of bowl season is playbook shenanigans. And the extra point is good for Tyler Sumter. Troy at 10 and 2, just a couple years after a 3 and 9 season, led downfield by Silvers. And the opening drive capped off by the reserve tailback Anderson. Troy with the lead. Seven up in Troy with the lead over North Texas, the RL Carriers, New Orleans Bowl. And this was a quick sellout of the Troy tickets, by the way, this week. They are rather excited with a program building under a head coach at just age 37, Neil Brown, in the opening drive, very strong. Yeah, and Neil Brown is the play caller in that air raid slash bring a run game to the party offense. And Neil Brown certainly scripted a good one, and his quarterback, Brandon Silvers, was on fire. North Texas gets its first touch. The runners up in the Conference USA Championship game a couple of weeks ago, and North Texas has an offense that has been unlike anything you've seen in Denton in history. They use the hashtag new Denton, and here's part of the reason. Yeah, and that newness is a run game that's married to the Mike Leach air raid with Graham Harrell calling the plays, but the influence of the head coach Seth Luttrell on Graham Harrell is a more complicated, intricate run game, and right now it looks really good on the field, and you have this guy named Mason Fine that might be 5'9", playing quarterback with an enormous chip on his shoulder. 
Movement at the line and a free play for Mr. Fine on the opening play for North Texas. And they'll take the five-yard flag after the incompletion. Mason Fine from small town Oklahoma. He's out of Locust Grove, the Conference USA Offensive Player of the Year. You know, in all the comparisons Outside, to... Outside, defense, number 47 and number 90. Five-yard penalty. Replay, first down. And you see the defense jumped off sides, and Mason Fine uses the hard count to start the game. But the comparisons to Drew Brees and a guy like Russell Wilson in terms of guys that have always been told that they're too short to play the quarterback position, and the commonality is incredible productivity out of all those guys. It's a run play that gets stifled. Sam Levy, the linebacker for Troy, was in on the hit. And this is going to be the key, Jason, all game long for North Texas offensively. Can they establish the run? We saw them at Florida Atlantic a couple weeks ago in the in the Conference USA title game, and they were one-dimensional, and it didn't work well. Florida Atlantic ended up with nine sacks because North Texas could not establish the run in any significant way. And that's what Graham Harrell, the offensive coordinator, told us. Nine sacks then. Here's the first one today. Ball loose. And finally picked up around the 11 yard, the 15 yard line by Troy. Statham knocked it free. Levy got on top of it. And Statham is a guy who gets tremendous pressure from the defensive tackle position. He's going to loop around. By the defense. First down, Troy. And right there, just a. Obviously, confusion up front on the blocking assignment. Number 30, Statham was turned completely loose, and Mason Fine did not secure the football. A huge early play defensively for Troy. So at the 14 is where Troy takes over. Just the seventh fumble recovery all year for the Trojans. Execution and taking care of the football. Both of the head coaches told us that's the key. And right now, Troy is doing both of those things. Taking the football away and executing offensively really well. Silvers to the 11. We, we don't see much of the quarterback design runs. That was more of a read, the option outside, but Silvers does not run it a ton. He throws this time inside the five to Willis one more time. And remember what Graham Harrell and Seth Luttrell and Troy Reffitt all told us yesterday from North Texas. They said that Florida Atlantic game, it was here we go again. Yeah. And you wonder if here we go again is going to creep back in after a negative start for the Mean Green. Yeah, that is a good point. I think it's it was essential that North Texas got off to a good start. Well, that's not happening right now. So as a program that's still building, those things creep into the players' minds. Are we going to go downhill once again? One more time, Anderson. Touchdown, Troy. Points off of turnovers on that drive. And the long drive, the one before, and both of them looked way, way too easy for Troy. Six touchdowns this year for Anderson. And the swinging gate shows its face again. See if they snap it this time. Silvers throws, and Johnson in the back of the end zone. That's pretty good stuff. You see the time before how the defense is going to adjust, and essentially it's the triple option. Silvers gets outside and has a receiver in the back of the end zone and can pitch it if he wants. Troy's much improved defense made this thing go. Sack fumble. Trojans get it back. And Josh Anderson in for the injured Jordan Shun. The senior has a couple of scores. The Arundel Carriers New Orleans Bowl. Brought to you by Arundel Carriers. We ship anything, anywhere, anytime. Audi. And the Capital One Venture Card. Earn unlimited double miles on every purchase, every day. What's in your wallet? Good, clean karaoke fun. 
in NOLA. We weren't even invited to that. What's your karaoke song, Kelly Stauffer? I've, I've literally never done that. <laughs> I was waiting to debut with you. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Then we'll do it tonight after the game. It's perfect. That sounds great. You I can't wait for that. You just walk yourself into a complete <laughs> disaster. 15-0 Troy with the lead, and Evan Johnson the return for North Texas. They needed a big play, and he's across the 30-yard line. Other than a couple of games against FAU, North Texas had one of the best second halves of the season of any team. And Nine that and FAU was kind of the capitulation point. They got hammered and then went on a nice little run. And it's all about a bunch of points. School records are falling all over the place in total offense. And then we were at that one. That was a somewhat of a bloodletting. And as long as they don't see Florida Atlantic, they felt pretty good about themselves. So back to Mason Fine, the sophomore, who throws that quick route hit by Jones. It was Jason Pirtle, his redshirt freshman out of the same high school, Locust Grove in Oklahoma. Well, talking about those bad thoughts, those negative thoughts that sit on your shoulder, this game hasn't started well for North Texas. They could really use something good to happen offensively right here on this drive. Fine on the run. He's dragged down by Levy. Just short of the 40-yard line, a couple of yards shy. And, and Kel, do you think it's maybe the slot receivers here today for North Texas that can create an advantage? Yeah, I think Michael Lawrence actually has a great opportunity, number 32 from North Texas. And I think there's a kind of thinned out on the coverage in because of injuries for Troy. I think the opportunity lies in the middle of the field for number 32, Michael Lawrence at times. Flag. Before Fine can throw, and if that's a five-yard penalty on North Texas, that's no good. False start. Offense, number 71, five-yard penalty. Still third down. Left tackle, Jordan Murray. This has a similar feel to how the game started in the Conference USA Championship game against Florida Atlantic, and you get revved up a little bit, and you, you, you start these pre-snap penalties, and you're not thinking about your assignments, and at some point in time, leadership needs to show itself, and everyone needs to calm down a little bit and simply execute the basics. Fine over the middle, incomplete. He wanted the tight end, Kelvin Smith. And it was dislodged by Sidarius Rooker to the Troy secondary. Kelly, that's what North Texas offensive line coach Chuck Langston was getting into his guys before this series. He was livid with them, saying, this is the same exact thing that happened against FAU. I don't understand. How could you not be ready? They all got revved up to go back out there, but it's kind of a here we go again for the coaches as well. Well, the penalty certainly didn't help. As Rookard is back to receive for Troy, and he's driven back to the 21. Full bowl day here on ESPN. Two more bowl games, 4.30 Eastern. Your alma mater, Colorado State in the yeah. Gildan, New Mexico Bowl against Marshall. And then at 8, Middle Tennessee and Arkansas State in the Raycom Media Camellia Bowl. They had a great one last year between App State and Toledo. So watch for that from the Crampton Bowl. Both games streaming live on the ESPN app as Nick Stevens for Colorado State yeah, makes an assault on that. your... Yeah, you're just gonna you're not even gonna yeah. let me say it. Are no, you? No, I we can move along, but <laughs> My pass records are Falling by the wayside. No doubt about that Foundationally flimsy at this point. I'm not bitter about any of it. Oh, certainly not Tavares McCormick the wide receiver on the reverse slung out of bounds after a gain of four Well, North Texas is defensive style in that 335 is to create some chaos and create some negative plays and get off the field. And their team right now could certainly use North Texas defense to take the football away. Silver is another pass with a lot of green in between it and the receiver and another on target throw to Willis. Jason, I think that's what you see out of the defense for North Texas. There's a lot of softness out on the edge. Eric Jenkins is giving Damon Willis so much time and certainly 
Brandon Silvers has taken full advantage of it. Way too much softness out on the edge. There's a draw up the middle. Silvers has opened the game eight for eight for 87 yards for Troy. And Brent, Willis has probably half of those, right? Doesn't he? He has five out of those eight catches. And so Silvers has certainly found something he likes in Willis. And what they both like is really the softness that the corners of North Texas is playing with currently out on the perimeter. Uh, you could just tell talking to Brandon Silvers how stoked he was to play in this venue considering he's a big Saints fan had a huge Super Bowl party the year they won the Super Bowl with the onside kick right out of the half uh, he's been to Sugar Bowls in this building and he has been lethal so far as they run it on second down to set up third and medium Jenkins with the stop for North Texas and once again this is a down in distance it's a third and most likely a pass down and North Texas and Troy Reffitt in particular, the defensive coordinator, have to find a way to get off the field. Third and seven, down in distance-wise, situationally means pass. Does North Texas have an answer in coverage against a very hot quarterback in Brandon Silvers? Wheeler's coming, and he got there! Joshua Wheeler the sack after leading the team last year and Willers has been that guy in the past is the more the consistent pressure guy kind of an edge pressure that Troy Reffitt adds right there on the in man on the line of scrimmage and then it's just running the rail to swim up inside when the tackle sets outside and then Wheeler gets home and his team needed that one he just burned JL Gaston no doubt and North Texas, which needed a strong defensive set, got it as Darden makes the fair catch after a 44-yard punt. The Mean Green back to the controls after this. French Quarter here in New Orleans, 15-0 Troy with the lead. The Trojans have been here a couple times. North Texas went to four straight in the early 2000s. But let's tell you about the hot topics around college football brought to you by Outback Steakhouse. We combined to make our picks here. Who we did. For uh, best game, UCF and Auburn. That has an in your influence in some of this stuff, though. A high-scoring affair, <laughs> Texas Tech, South Florida. Good coaches, Matt Campbell, Mike Norvell, two up-and-coming coaches this bowl season North Texas with an offensive coordinator who loves to pass runs here with Tucker what do you think about that best coaching matchup that you and I both selected <laughs> I don't know that I had a say in that huh to be perfectly honest with you I like uh, Grantham against Petrino in the tax Slayer Bowl there might be uh, no love loss in that one Mason wow. Fine got hit, absorbed it, and threw it away before he was finally taken down. Seth Calloway missed on the first one, and Statham had him as he threw it away. And yeah, that was fantastic avoidance by Mason Fine, but the bottom line is the downside of it, there was nobody to throw to down the field. So you're getting separation if you're Troy's passing game, but... North Texas isn't finding anything in the run game and no separation when Mason Fine is trying to throw it either. And you see those safeties starting to creep toward the line a little bit more. Third down and eight. Five come for Troy, one late as Fine has Lawrence for the first down. There's that guy, Michael Lawrence, you were talking about. And across the middle of the field as well, and that's the matchup that I think North Texas has to go to often today. I think there's a man-to-man -man matchup because of the lack of experience in that nickel slot coverage position, and Michael Lawrence has a really good chemistry with Mason Fine. Play action for Fine. Down the middle, a little too hot to handle. He wanted Caleb Chumley, the reserve tight end, and second down, but you're, you're talking about the defense for Troy Marcus Jones has to play corner instead of nickel because of an yeah. injury to Blaze Brown who's a big interception guy for them yeah and Marcus Jones a true freshman 
would go into the slot in a nickel situation, which is most of the time in college football, and he would be a shutdown guy inside. Now he goes outside, and so there's a lack of experience inside right now for Troy coverage-wise. Tucker on the flip, and Andrew Tucker has a North Texas first down. Those are the things that North Texas has done well throughout the year that has them scoring about 36 points a game. It's the rhythm passing. You know, clear things up for Mason Fine. Get the ball out quickly and just continue to methodically drive the football. Quick throw, and he has Nick Smith, his tailback. We, we're talking about UCF and Auburn, and what a great game that Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl is likely to be. UCF's new head coach, Josh Heupel, has a history with Mason Fine, who went to his quarterback camps at Oklahoma to learn from him. And it's really the only official coaching before he started to play the position, Nathan, or Mason Fine. And then his dad took over from there, and this is the result. Essentially what they did is they got the lessons from Heupel then went into the backyard and essentially just replicated everything yeah. they did at the camp. All about reps from there. I, I think that was a very good approach and Mr. Fine has done a great job of getting Mason going and obviously the chip on his shoulder because he's told that he's not tall enough to play the position and all he did in high school is put up over 13,000 yards. Another whistle before the snap and another damaging penalty coming. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, number 53, five yard penalty, still third down. 42 penalty yards a game, 26th best in the nation yeah. for North Texas. This is rare. Yeah, it's rare and it just shows you that they're a little bit anxious. They're a little bit out of sorts. And this is where Chris talked about the leadership needs to take over and get everyone settled down and this drive offensively for North Texas has looked certainly better than their previous drives. Maybe four down territory as well. We'll see. Here's a flag against Troy. Free play down the sideline and Bussey is underneath it. What a grab by Rico Bussey. What an adjustment on the football by Bussing. This is a prototypical fade route. Throw it high, fade it to the outside, and drop it in the pocket. Offside, defense, number 40. That penalty is declined. The result of play is a first down. Declined because of the catch by Bussing. I mean, that, you can't get much better than that. This is a guy out of Lawton, Oklahoma, Rico Bussey Jr., who has six touchdowns, all of which have come from 15 yards out or longer this season. This one goes for 33 inside the 20. I think we might see some points today. If North Texas continues to execute like they are in this drive, certainly. We know Troy's going to score it. Tucker across the 15. First two drives, nothing. Not a whole lot. In fact, they went backwards to some extent and, and then the fumble, but this drive put nine plays out there, but it has to finish in the end zone. You can see right there, this drive is still ongoing, nine plays, but it's not about getting to the red zone. It's about getting touchdowns because we know Troy right now is playing with a hot quarterback in Brandon Silvers. Nick Smith, the freshman, in for the injured Wilson. A couple of hundred-yard games to his name. The redshirt freshman out of Arlington's Martin High School, the same school that provided Miles Garrett. You know, Jason, this drive, that was the 10th play of this drive, and we don't know the result yet, obviously, but North Texas is really a big play offense. That's something that Florida Atlantic didn't allow North Texas to do, is to get big plays, force them to drive it, and North Texas couldn't do it in that game a couple of weeks ago. Fine on third down, snaps it off to Bussey to the end zone. Touchdown, North Texas. That's his first score under 15 this year, but it comes after he put up 33 on the drive on one grab.
Trevor Moore, perfect in his career on extra points. He remains so, 15 to seven. We're on pace for something like 88 points today. And Bussy is part of the reason. Yeah, the first catch by Bussy was a tremendous fade throw and a great adjustment by Bussy to finish that play. And then this touchdown was more about the coverage, I think. Bussy is sitting all alone. And remember, we talked about the injuries on the back end. Chris Weatherspoon, a safety's not playing. Blaze Brown, a corner that's typically in there, is not playing. Marcus Jones, who typically plays inside, has gone outside. And that was a coverage bust to let Bussy set completely alone. Remember what Graham Harrell told us yesterday about working with Aaron Rodgers? Yeah. And Aaron Rodgers' eyes there? Yeah. Fine didn't necessarily look down Bussy the entire time there. He was looking left, but not directly at the receiver. Price number 15 is now wearing number one. Yeah, Jason, that's a great point. And two things that Graham Harrell told us that he learned from Aaron Rodgers, the use of the eyes and the importance of the feet. Mason Fine looks outside, knowing that Bussy is sitting inside, that coverage goes outside, and then Bussy's left all alone for a touchdown inside. That's a great look at it. Jones is undercut at the 18. We have so much football for you on our ESPN networks. And you can watch all of it on the ESPN app. Every ESPN ABC college football game live at home or on the go. You can watch three, four at once. Uh, it, why would you not have the ESPN app is the real question. You have to, especially during bowl season. Actually, it's an important thing all season long. And bowl season is it's a must back to Graham Harold for a moment he said look I'm not going to teach our guys to throw blind passes but there is something to learn <laughs> no from Aaron Rodgers passes in football Aaron Rodgers loves those big run for Anderson and Troy he's got two touchdowns and he scoots inside the 30 finally chopped down by McLean it's a 55 yard run schematically North Texas does a lot of movement before the snap they can create negative plays but the downside is a play like this North Texas ends up out of position they're out of gap on the right end of the line of scrimmage and Josh Anderson makes him pay mightily for it now wildcat formation with BJ Smith silver is split out Smith just short of the 20 yard line and that's what you have to do on a play like that the quarterback goes out wide there's fly motion but at the end of the day what was the result a basic zone run which is what Troy does all the time anyway so as a defender yet you, you have to forget all the eye candy and just focus on your assignment. Two big point scores, 15 to seven. Troy over North Texas. You know what rhymes with you? A Troy win to be on ESPN. That's all they want for Christmas. Sit down. Sit down. 22 points on the board after one quarter. The Sun Belt and Conference USA getting together for one of three meetings between those two conferences today. Jason Benetti, Kelly Stauffer, Chris Budden is downstairs from the Louisiana Superdome, now the Mercedes Benz Superdome. They used to call the AstroTurf here Mardi Gras. They've changed the surface since then. But the name's still nice. I guess. Where did you come up with that one? That I didn't do it. They did. They that, used to. That was a non-starter. I'm glad that doesn't really live anymore. <laughs> Brandon Silver is perfect for Troy. Still perfect. Johnson inside the 10 first and goal. The RPO, the zone run inside, and the quick hitch to Johnson outside, and then Silver's with that quick release, strong arm, but he gets rid of it very efficiently as well. 
Silvers for Willis. End zone. Touchdown, Troy. You can't throw it and catch it any better than this. Eric Jenkins, the corner to that side, actually had decent coverage man to man. I was right in line with that window there, and it's a very small window, but the ball placement was impeccable, and then the quick snatch of the ball with the hands by Willis. That's really, really good stuff. 10 for 10 for Silvers. Six of those catches for 80 yards for Damian Willis. He had 19 catches in the previous 12 games, and he has eight today, right? Six. Six, six for 80. Wow. How about this, though? We were talking to Troy Raffa, the defensive coordinator for North Texas, and we said, who scares you most? The two receivers he listed are out today. Yeah. And it's Willis who's been doing the damage this afternoon and uh, Hio Silvers is yeah. 10 for 10 for a buck seven sharp I mean absolutely sharp you want bowls we got bowls Friday December 29th the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic AT&T Stadium in Arlington Sam Darnold at USC JT Barrett at Ohio State a couple of quarterbacks you'll be seeing on Sundays at some point 8.30 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. So in the hot topics, what was your best game? UCF Because that said announcer's picks, but that was somewhat misleading because I don't know that I had a say in any of those picks. I like the USC-Ohio State matchup. Both teams that thought they were a college football playoff team. Well, you get a chance to prove how motivated you are. You didn't end up where you thought you should be. Go out and put out a good effort in that game. You're saying that your voice wasn't heard on our choices? Not a whole lot, to be honest. This return to the 31-yard line for North Texas. And this offense trailing 22-7 to as Hamilton gets uh, some pats on the head for his work. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't get to do that very often. Look, Ladarius Hamilton, they call him Hambone, sophomore defensive lineman on the return that time. No, is that probably his first carry of his career? We need to look into that. Good news, we have Ed Sfita here. Fast Eddie, could we get that information ASAP? Bad news, we have Ed Sfita here. <laughs> Fine, back to the offense for North Texas. Bussy at the sideline, got his hands underneath it, but look, the defense for North Texas had some great stops in the Conference USA Championship game, but the offense now just puts up the seven points, and Troy goes right back yeah. down against him. Yeah. What you want to see when you score offensively is your defense to get off the field without giving up points. And actually, Troy is really good at doing just that, but North Texas gave it up as soon as they got it. They become one-handed because the rush game has been non-existent today. And that's not a good thing. That's exactly what we saw against Florida Atlantic, and it resulted in Chris Kiffin, the defensive coordinator, his team having nine sacks. Negative the, rush yards is not a great yeah, sign. Going backwards is not the way to be two-dimensional in a football game. And Graham Harrell certainly will pass it. The offensive coordinator said he loves to pass the ball. That's how he played his college ball under Mike Leach. Fine to the edge for Lawrence at a first down for North Texas. He grabbed it right in front of Andre Flakes, the linebacker. And Michael Lawrence is, I think, the sweet spot in this matchup today against this Troy defense. I think Mason Fine needs to understand that, whether it's going outside breaking routes or inside. I think with the man-match type of coverage that Troy plays on the back end, the real estate to gain is Michael Lawrence in the middle of the field. Fine and incomplete. That was Lawrence, and it was the middle of the field, but he couldn't hang on. Yeah, I think Michael Lawrence just simply tried to run with it before he secured it. And those are those execution mishaps that North Texas can't afford to do. We saw a dropped pass by Kelvin Smith earlier in the first quarter that should have been a conversion to extend a drive, and there we see Michael Lawrence on that one. 
Goes over the bridge of the nose with the eye black, by the way, Lawrence. That's a pretty decent look. Fine. And what a job coming back to the ball by Quentin Jackson. And that was essential because that window was closing quickly. It was a curl flat concept. There's a receiver out in the flat that kind of draws coverage, opens up that seam to Jackson. But you're right, it's called working back down the stem, working back toward the line of scrimmage, and Fine brings Jackson back on that ball. Junior, who was injured last year, out of Granite Sil uh, City, Illinois, Jackson. Third down. Fine quick hitter for Lawrence, and there is the soft spot, as you were talking about, first down. That has been there anytime you want it, if you're North Texas. And if I'm them, I want that every time it's there. Because of the nature of coverage on the back end, what I mean by man match is you have five to six defensive backs and the coverage is determined by the release of the receivers. Typically there's some softness between the hashes in that coverage concept and Michael Lawrence is the guy that Mason Fine needs to find early and often. Lawrence on the right side of the formation and they run it finally with some room to go for Evan Johnson. So if you're a quarterback in that man match scenario, what are you watching as you get to the line? Well, you're, you obviously know how you're deploying your guys formationally. And then the, sub the, the coverage is dictated, dictated on the other side by the safety. So initially you're watching safeties, and as they start to match coverage, then your eyes have to go to the open man. Looked like there might be a crease, but that closed very quickly for Johnson. So third down and short coming for North Texas as Baron Poole got in to help on the stop. Third and short, and I would be highly surprised if this isn't four down territory right here. First of all, you're kind of in that tweener place in terms of where you are on the field, but North Texas needs to get in the end zone. Play action fine. Giving ground as he throws to the sideline. Bussy and it is incomplete. Marcus Jones, the freshman, recovered beautifully. And Marcus Jones was fortunate this ball was underthrown. Bussy runs a slant and then go. It's called a sluggo. Very well ran, and that ball was woefully underthrown, or that's a touchdown. In fact, that's an easy touchdown. And Mason Fine did not get pressure. Threw off his back foot a little bit, and that ball came up short, or that's a walk-in touchdown as we see North Texas going for it on fourth and two. They're 58%, 15 of 26 on fourth down this year. Fine, backpedaling again. Over the middle, and Lawrence reached out to make the grab, and they're going to say incomplete. Well, Fine finds the right guy the in Lawrence. Incomplete pass, first down. We know it was ruled an incomplete pass on the field. Replay booth is taking a closer look at it as we speak, and the question is, does that ball come through the arms of Michael Lawrence and get to the ground? Remember, the ruling on the field is the starting point, so you'd need indisputable video evidence to overturn. 22-7 for now. Troy gets it next. The ruling of incomplete pass on the North Texas Ford, uh, fourth down was confirmed, and here's why. Yeah, initially, I think Michael Lawrence has the ball, but you can see the ball leak through over top of that right forearm, and I think correctly called on the field. So first down for Troy from the 31, leading by two scores. Anderson waits for his time and gets across the 35. So Josh Anderson, the very patient runner, the roommate of Jordan Chun, who's injured with a knee problem today, taking over in style. Even though Jordan Chun has been incredibly productive and a touchdown producer for this program, I don't know that there's a lot of drop-off. 
when Josh Anderson plays. In fact, I think you get a little more speed, kind of quick twitch type of presentation to the run game, and Anderson's very productive. Silver is off the high snap to the sideline, and this is caught by Willis, so Silver is, remains perfect, 11 for 11. Silvers is dealing it very sharp in his ball placement, and Damian Willis, the ability to snatch the ball. I mean, this ball is a little outside, but the quickness to the ball with the hands, and Willis had 19 catches coming into this game, and I think that makes number seven. Ties a career high with number seven there. Third down for Troy, and Anderson reaching with the ball for a first down. You almost have this feeling like you're watching, uh, I don't know, Steven Strasburg in the sixth inning with Silvers still perfect in terms of completion rates. Yeah, and Neil Brown told us, the head coach at Troy, that they thought they had some opportunities out on the perimeter. And Willis was one of those matchups that he talked about because of the inexperience back in for North Texas. Neil Brown thought that there were some opportunities, and Willis certainly is coming up big. 11 for 11 so far. Silvers is no good for the first time. Not exactly a bunt single, but Jenkins with the coverage. And Brandon Silvers went to the right place, had what he wanted. The middle of the field was open. No safety hanging out between the hashes. Willis running a post route. That's exactly where Brandon Willis should go. And I think the defender might have gotten there a little bit early. Silvers. Silvers wants a flag. And uh, the head coach, by the way, of the Saints who play in this building, Sean Payton, was very unhappy with officiating recently as well. So he fits. Third down coming up off a short run. A Gio with the tackle on Anderson. Eric Jenkins was the corner for North Texas that was on that coverage. And it looked like he had the left hand on the back and did arrive a little bit early. So you think we should still call him perfect? No. It's an incomplete pass. It, there isn't any question about it. But it was actually a really well-thrown ball once again. I thought you were arguing with the official scorer. As they do in baseball. Third you down. Go back and review it in that game. You can't hear. Silvers. Sideline route. And this one's incomplete. Willis was there. And a flag comes in. Jenkins the coverage. And we'll see. Well, Eric Jenkins did not get called for the pass interference on the play before. The deep post. And apparently does on this play. And. Pass interference, defense, number two, 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Jason, I think the first one might have been a little bit more egregious than this one. The tight coverage, the right hand, and if you don't look back for the football, you're never going to get the benefit of the doubt. He had contact the whole time. I think that's a that's a flag. No. You agree? No, I don't know that I do agree, to be honest with you. I don't think there was anything there that impeded the receiver to getting back to the football. Anderson feeling his way, a little hurdle, and that is a clever run inside the 35 for the senior Anderson. Remember, Anderson is a 250-pound back. He's a bowling ball with elbows and, and knees, and you see it on a lot of his runs. He picks his way very close to the marker there to the 32 as Joshua Wheeler, who had the earlier sack, made the stop. But Jason, that's the difference in these two offenses currently. Troy can run it. North Texas can't. And you can't play this game typically one-dimensionally and... North Texas is having to try to do that, and they've been inconsistent at it. And Troy has a lot of things working, a hot quarterback to a, a go-to hot receiver in Willis and been able to run the football with Josh Anderson. And an innovative play caller to boot, Neil Brown in his third season, still under the age of 40, 37 years old. Johnson off the screen doesn't get much, but... Uh, we were talking to Neil Brown yesterday, and we asked him, 
what do you want eventually out of coaching? And he said, look, I, uh, the one thing I do want, I know already at this very young age is I want to go out on my own terms. Yeah, it's interesting. He's had the ability to think about that down the line already. Yeah, when he's essentially just getting started. And it's interesting to me, he comes from the the air raid Mike Leach influence and he chooses to keep calling plays like Mike Leach does. Seth Luttrell, on the other hand, has given that up. Sideline from Silvers and a contested grab by Willis. Incredible. You really can't cover this out route any better than Eric really Jenkins does. For progress for a first down. And that is incredible stuff. Quick snap. Silvers decides to chuck it out of bounds. I mean, I, I really think that great ball placement and snatching of the football the re, by the receiver always beats good coverage. And Eric Jenkins had great coverage on that play before, but a great throw and a great catch. Against Damian Willis, who went to last chance U, East Mississippi Community College, said right away, I want to go to JUCO. Don't recruit me. I want to go to JUCO. I'll think about coming back to the offer from Troy. That snap is on its way to Baton Rouge, and North Texas is on top of it. Colton McDonald for the mean green to the end zone. What a game changer. And those are the kind of things you need, Jason, in games like this. The errant snap, and Brandon Silvers decides to try to cut the defender, knowing that he's not going to outrun him to the ball. In the meantime, Colton McDonald picks it up and runs it back. And those are the type of moments you need to get back in games when your offense is suffering a little bit. And it appears that North Texas is going to go for two right here. The proverbial chasing of the points early, but... Bowl season, what the heck? They will chase the points. I mean, you've worn for years and years and years, as you just said. All the rules go out the window when it's bowl time, <laughs> it seems like. Mason Fine on the run. Tries to get outside and gets toppled just short of the goal line. Ball came out late. They're going to say he was down and Fine got drilled. Fine got drilled about three times. And this, I believe, wasn't a, a zone read situation. I think Fine intended to. Rolling on the field was that the runner was down the time. short of the goal line. Mason Fine gets a big hit. When we come back, a little fun with Chris Button on the sideline. where they have a tradition on Friday nights during their happy hour that someone special gets to saber a champagne bottle. And I was the only one brave enough, Jason Kelly over here. No, 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 we're just security detail. Yeah. We're trying to be good team players. It's not sharp, don't worry. Braith, the wine director here at Brennan's has taught me how to do this. Need so, someone to hold this way? Nope, get out of the way. Out of the you way. need someone to get hit by what's about to, because I'm happy. I, I would back up is what I would do. So long the scene, ready? Never done this before. Gotta go. Whoa! Yay! My God. Well done! First time. That was uh, that was pretty outstanding there, Chris. Did you mention all the other famous people that I'm now in a lineup? Troy number 15 is now. You are on a list with Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, and the drummer from the Foo Fighters. <laughs> Congratulations! And then Chris, Chris Button. Hey, what was the over under on how many fingers you guys were betting on that I lose? We had. I think it was two. Yeah, we had at least a couple, but well done. Very skilled. Marcus Jones on the return across the 15. Let's see what more Chris can do with a sword after this. Just kidding. Football. 
The Arendelle Carriers New Orleans Bowl, brought to you by Arendelle Global Logistics, worldwide logistics and supply chain solutions. Boost Mobile and Jaguar, the art of performance. You know, we have wall-to-wall -wall football, but one of the lost things in bowl week is the ability of the young men, along with the traveling party, to get to go do some community service. This is from the Ozanam Inn, cleaning and sorting and bagging toys for the Troy Trojans. They visited patients at Tulane Lakeside Hospital, and this is them reading to students at Alice Burney Elementary School. One of the wonderful things about bowl season is the contact with the community for all these players. As here's a long ball down the sideline for Silvers, and it is brought in, going the other way. Keyshawn McLean for North Texas, the interception. Silvers was trying to get the ball to John Johnson outside on a double move, kind of a stutter go and trying to get outside, but Keyshawn McLean is the safety in the middle of the field and has all of the time in the world to work out of the middle, really off the hash, and get out there and intercept that ball was in the air. If Silvers is going to throw that ball, Jason, he has to hold the safety McLean in the middle of the field and then turn and throw it, and he didn't do a very good job with his eyes. Troy turnovers on consecutive plays, and for McLean, he had a pick in his first career game started. This his final career game. He has an interception as well. So Mason Fine, the sophomore quarterback, wants one to the sideline and through the hands of Bussey, second down. Jason, the energy on this North Texas sidelines has changed dramatically. Just five minutes ago, it was very testy. I saw two fights down here, one with offensive lineman Jordan Murray and Quay Hill, who was not dressed out for today. They got into a face-to-face -face scuffle. Hill tried to come over and, and amp him up, and Murray just didn't want to hear it. But things have taken a dramatic shift, though, recently. Well, sometimes you just need to let that energy out. And Nick Smith, who they referred to as quick, has a first down inside the 45. You've been on sidelines like that yeah. where the energy just needs to turn, right? And the guys that aren't on the field are getting in the faces of the guys that are playing and saying, what are you guys doing? You need to get it going in some form, and you don't really care where it comes from on a sideline. You just want the the energy to change. And I think right now North Texas is showing signs that that's working, whatever it takes. Fine on the roll. Can't set, so he throws it out of bounds. Second down. Great coverage, good decision. You see Mason Fine trying to extend the play a little bit, but not a lot of separation. In fact, there was none down the field by North Texas's receivers. Quarterback who Graham Harrell calls an itty-bitty quarterback. Itty-bitty. But boy, has he had an awesome season. Short toss, Smith under the wave of white jerseys, loses a bunch. Hunter Reese, the former walk-on with the stop. I think I would put that play to bed for today. When you show the ball quickly, Troy's defense has speed and it's a quick show of the football, and defenders just rally to the ball. If you want to get to the perimeter, you have to do it either fly motion type stuff or handing the ball off and slicing to the edge. Third and long. Troy brings four and gets there for the moment. Fine loads up a long ball and missed it out of bounds for Lawrence. Mason Fine does a great job of keeping the ball alive, trying to find Michael Lawrence down the field. Good avoidance. Think Baker Mayfield right here. He's the group of five, Baker Mayfield, and then the pop right at the end. It was Folsom on the pop, the weak side linebacker, but Fine bounces right up and extend the play, try to make something happen, and Fine couldn't find Lawrence down the field. You get hit by a guy named Tron, it's not going to feel great. Tron Folsom with the stick there. And a fair catch inside the 15 for Sidarius Rooker. Troy up nine, but a couple turnovers in tow.
Semifinals, New Year's Day on ESPN. Be sure to see Star Wars The Last Jedi now playing in theaters and IMAX everywhere. Whoa. Can you whoa, make whoa. those sounds? Yeah. One of my favorite moments of this football season was Sean McDonough in the Monday Night Football booth with a Stormtrooper. <laughs> what a pair. Look forward to seeing the movie. We've been prepping for football, so we haven't gotten there yet. We will. Anderson on the ground. He's got a couple of touchdowns so far today. Ladarius Hamilton with the stop, the young man who had his second career kick return earlier. The Last Jedi, the, the Stauffer group is going to The Last Jedi on Sunday. My children were somewhat disappointed that I made them wait until I get home. Is that right? Yeah, I and mean, we put on the Star Wars shirts and everything. Do you really? Do you, you have lightsabers? No, we don't. Yeah, actually, we do have a couple of them. We don't take those to the theater, though. But full <laughs> regalia in terms of shirts and go as a group. That's that's who we are. Please take pictures and put them on your non-existent <laughs> Twitter account. Troy backed up. Anderson goes down. Third down. We talked a little bit about Josh Anderson, the Troy players basically consider him a father figure, very religious, very spiritual, has helped a lot of young people in terms of learning about religion on this team. And it's not a shock that he would be a psychology major as he leaves Troy. Yeah, and, and the father figure, the, the experience he has, and the value to be able to put a guy like Anderson in when a productive guy like Jordan Chun can't play. I mean, that's, that's hard to replace. Wheeler's coming, and Wheeler makes the hit. That was quick for North Texas, and maybe they'll burn a timeout here. North Texas, it's called their first time out of the half. 30 and, seconds in length. And Wheeler is going to stunt really right up inside, and he's outside, he goes inside, and really stunts himself right into this play it's a quarterback draw you have two offensive linemen that are destined to escort brandon silvers the quarterback on the design quarterback draw and sometimes as a defensive play caller troy Reffitt in this case you kind of luck into it wheeler is stunting from right defensive in position and stunts right into the grill of silvers the quarterback Wheeler was third in the nation in junior college in 2015 with 16 sacks. He showed up in the lap of Seth Luttrell out of Grand Prairie and has played very well in this bowl game. So North Texas will get it back now and after halftime. Darden running laterally and at the 41 let's check in with chris cotter in the studio see what's up at halftime chris all right jason kelly coming up with a half emmanuel Lacho and jonathan vilma will join me mercedes-benz halftime we got six bowls today so we'll show you some highlights preview some games including the las vegas bowl boise state and oregon royce freeman not expected to play for oregon so the guys will talk about that growing trend of players sitting out in bowl games it's all coming up mercedes-benz halftime we'll see you then would you ever sit out a bowl game? Trend. If I could make money at the next level, um, I would certainly consider it. Really? No doubt about it. That it becomes, shocks me. It becomes a business decision at that point. If you can make money that potentially could change the next generation for your family, no doubt. I would certainly consider it. Mason Fine to his tight end, Smith. So second down coming up. North Texas down two scores but gets the ball after halftime. Yeah, a little over two minutes left and two timeouts left. They burn one to change of possession to preserve a little time. So, yeah, I think this is a critical drive for North Texas to get right back in the thick of these things. Fine. Eludes the rush and wings it out of bounds. It was Baron Poole who was reaching for the legs of Fine third down. Fine has a great knack of avoiding pressure just like that. But the problem is, you, you think of like a Baker Mayfield. Avoids a lot of pressure, extends the play, gets outside. But then he has skill position that consistently get open. Right now, Mason Fine doesn't have that in this game. Third and eight for Fine. 
And they run it maybe with an eye to going for it on fourth down. I think you're exactly right. I think that call was designed to get into, if you don't convert, get into a fourth and much more manageable situation. Kind of surprised Troy didn't think about using a timeout. Yeah, because you see North Texas milking the clock just a little bit for that reason. If you don't convert, you want to leave least amount of time you can for Brandon Silvers on the other side of the field. Fine. Quick set. Throws it out of the backfield for Johnson on a first down for North Texas inside the 20. Great design. Remember we talked about number 32 Michael Lawrence, the slot receiver, goes inside and Johnson goes outside and completely uncovered. Two defenders went with Michael Lawrence, who's been the focus of Mason Fine. And now we see Troy calling a timeout. Nobody covered the running back to the flag. Troy, it's called their second timeout of the half. 30 seconds in length. Don't forget New Year's Day, the college football playoff semifinals on ESPN. Georgia and Oklahoma get together in the Rose Bowl game at 5 Eastern. Then number four, Alabama, and number one, Clemson. A little rematch, the Old State Sugar Bowl from right here, the Superdome in New Orleans. Both games streaming live on the ESPN app. We showed you our hot topics presented by Outback Steakhouse earlier. They continue here, our decisions made as a group. A sneaky good Dollar General Bowl, App State and Toledo. Iowa and BC, it's like shadow boxing. Yeah, that could be playing like in a parking lot somewhere or a phone booth. The upset potential, and I give it to the, the Peach Bowl, that group of five Central Florida against Auburn. I don't think the point spread is all that much, but. Well, UCF is going to have Scott Frost coaching. As we take a look at where Johnson went out of bounds along the sideline, the only question is how far did he advance? He has the first down no matter what. So it does look like they're going to lose a little bit of yardage on that step with the right foot. But uh, Scott Frost kind of reminds you of these two coaches a little bit. They're both under 40. They're both growing programs. Seth Luttrell yeah. and then Neil Brown on the other side. Uh, when they came in, their teams were a combined 4 and 20. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. And you, you're kind of cutting edge on the offensive side, and you can see right there the turnaround. And certainly Seth Luttrell and Neil Brown have done a tremendous job. You kind of come in, you, you lay the foundation, you get your schemes in place, and then you proceed to recruit to your schemes. And both of these coaches have done a great job. And we hear so much about the... The air raid coaching tree and coming from Hell Mummy and Tony Franklin, obviously Mike Leach. The pass games of both of these offenses have that. But what these two coaches have also fused to these offensive approaches is the run game. Much more diverse than you see typically out of the air raid style. But then the defensive side, they've matched up kind of a kind of an aggressive movement style on the defensive side centered on creating negative plays to get off the field. You mentioned the run game. Seth Luttrell has pounded that into Graham Harrell, the play caller for North Texas. The decision here is a six-yard difference between the 20 and the 14. So, After further review, the one on the field stands. Yeah, not confirmed. Stands didn't have the requisite indisputable video evidence to overturn the call. So to the 14 we go. And that run game influence that Seth Luttrell is, is teaching really to Graham Harrell. Graham Harrell told us, you know, when he was running the air raid, they didn't even really have much of a run game. Basically one play, but deep in the red zone right here, you need the run game to show up. Smith the tailback, first down. Fine, trying to run, broke free from one. That was Marcus Webb, the initial hit. Then Barker took him down finally. I would assume the North Texas, yeah, they're going to burn a timeout. 
They have two, burn one here. The rule of thumbs essentially is... North Texas, let's call their second time out of the half. When you get under a minute... seconds in length. Game clock operator, please set the game clock to 56 seconds, please. 56 seconds. With the timeouts, when you get under Thank a minute, you. you have more than one left. That's when you want to use it, and that's a good use of it for North Texas right there. Uh, as you saw, the run game hasn't been outstanding, but they're gaining yards. So that's something, certainly. By the way, kick off your NFL Sunday with the Countdown Crew. 10 a.m. Eastern, live from Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, where it's bound to be balmy. Biggest game of the season, Patriots and Steelers, plus early breaking stories, injury updates, game previews. Live on the ESPN app as well. Saints will be home here at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome tomorrow to take on the Jets. Different mean green this afternoon. Mason Fine ready to throw. Off his back foot to the end zone. He goes. Lawrence in the end zone. Touchdown. Michael Lawrence runs a corner route. It was a little late developing and very well thrown. Was that ball moving when Michael Lawrence comes down? The right foot was down. This is going to be close because there was a little movement of the ball which would constitute needing to make a play common to the game to, to finish the catch. The other question is, did the foot come down or the arm come down first? It looked like he had the foot down, but we will see. I don't know that I see anything that would be indisputable video evidence to overturn it. Right foot's down, catch is secured. The ball does move a little bit when he turns over, but I think that's a good catch and a, a timely play for North Texas offensively. This will not go to a replay review to stop the game and North Texas suddenly which was down 15 to nothing and looked a little bit wide eyed has drawn within two to get the ball after halftime. Allstate is proud to be part of the team that comes together to do good by contributing to participating universities general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick to date Allstate's contributed millions in scholarship funds. And Jason, North Texas was able to get back into this. The North Texas defensively made some plays, got off the field, and then the run game showed up just enough for North Texas to make them so they're not completely one-dimensional like they were through the really the first quarter and a half. Is now wearing number one. That's happened a couple times with the number switch for Troy. North Texas looking for its third ever 10 win season. The first one came in 1977 under Hayden Fry. Wow. The longtime Iowa coach. That came because of a forfeit. A while ago. Yeah, they had a forfeit from Mississippi State to get the 10th win. So the real on field 10 win season, the only one they had was back in 1947. A lot to play for today for the Mean Green. Jones across the 20 to the 21. The Troy Trojans 10 and 2 Sunbelt co-champions under Neil Brown. Lose to Boise State, got them on the schedule again next year. They won the next three. They beat LSU. I mean, that is the marquee victory, 24-21 in Baton Rouge. And then the last six games for the Trojans showing the biceps. Mentioned the co-champion to the Sun Belt. And Neil Brown, the Sun Belt Coach of the Year, taking over for Larry Blakeney, the longtime head coach. It was quite the lineage in that spot at Troy Chan Gailey. Spent a couple years as the head coach of Troy. Back-to-back 10-win -back seasons for this edition of the Trojans. McCormick. Finds his way out of bounds to stop the clock. You know, Jason, that we're just looking at Troy's season in review, that LSU win, as big as that was, and then the following week against their arch rival, South Alabama, they absolutely laid an egg. 
this offense that's been prolific at scoring points all year had eight. And they talked about the inability to handle that success. And then after that, they went on a run. That was a wake-up call, and obviously this team got the message. Silver's quick hitter for Sam Lenton. First six games, the offense was 20-plus, but after that, wow. And it was all about the pass game. The pass game was inexplicably dormant for the first six games, and then it came to life the last six. Silver's wanted the back shoulder, and they may get interference here on the defense from McLean. I'm not exactly sure who this is going to be on. Austin Preston, that nickel slot safety was in there as well. Silver's going for, for the back shoulder. Part of the pass, holding defense, number 27, 10-yard penalty and an automatic first down. They did get Preston. And that was early. That's a holding because the ball wasn't in the air yet. And Preston is that nickel defensive back that comes in and covers the slot. We didn't see it, I don't think, in, in that look because it was holding, meaning the ball wasn't thrown yet. So that had to come really early in that sequence. Silver steps up. And flips it out of the backfield for Josh Anderson, who does have soft hands, they say. And he's much more nimble than you would think a 250-pound running back would be. You see him nimble in the, you know, in the box, and that time he has great hands and has the ability to get up the sideline. Nimble and 250 typically don't go together. Yeah, the nimble bowling ball isn't a description no. you normally hear. Silver is on the slant. There was some contact. It's incomplete. Hall with the coverage on Johnson, and no flag comes in this time. Yeah, good defense. I think Keeman Hall was all over that. The slant, and then you get in the hip pocket. You don't arrive early, but when the ball's there, you come sliding inside over that right shoulder and slap the ball down. Hall did a great job on that play. Again, North Texas gets it after halftime, so this is maybe an important play for Troy. Silvers down the middle, dropped. Johnson had some space in front of him and could have set up a field goal. Instead, it's incomplete. And perfectly thrown by Brandon Silvers. Johnson comes inside, man-to-man -man coverage. You can see number six, the safety high in McLean, and then basically Johnson just has to get across the face of Preston. He does that, and the ball just simply goes through his hands. Runs a great route, does Johnson, but doesn't finish the play. Typically very good hands. He was a state title winner two years in a row as a high school baseball center fielder. But put that one on the carpet here at the Superdome, and this punt expires our first half. If you like points, we have 30 minutes left for you in the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. 22 20 at the break. Now the halftime report. Chris Cotter is your steward. Thank you, Jay. Welcome back to Capital One Bowl Mania. This is the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. And uh, manic is the word from our first half. Troy was up 15 to nothing in this game. North Texas has come firing back in the second quarter to make this a two-point game at halftime. Jason Benetti, Kelly Stauffer, Chris Budden in a moment. And Seth Luttrell, 39 years old, has his team furiously coming back against Troy. We had this team a couple of weeks ago when Florida Atlantic started the game like this against North Texas, and they did not respond like this. To come back that way is significant, and I think that's where you see the strides that Seth Luttrell has made in that North Texas program. But well, Brandon Silver is the quarterback for Troy, opened this game perfect. It took him a quarter and a half to miss on his first pass, but North Texas's defense, along with the quarterback Mason Fine, have responded well. And that's the key. Brandon Silver's really didn't cool off. I think the North Texas defense got a little bit better, created a couple of turnovers, and then you 
you saw a little feistiness out of Mason Fine. He was able to get himself right a little bit. I think early he was um, not really looking like he has most of the season. And that certainly was significant. And we'll see what happens as North Texas gets the ball to start the second half. Evan Johnson back to return for the guys out of Denton, Texas. Troy is out of Troy, Alabama with a large contingent here in New Orleans. And Johnson looked like he stepped out of the end zone and they are going to give him the touchback. This was very close to disaster. He's fine. Chris, what do you have? Jason talked to both coaches starting first with Troy. Neil Brown was still pleased with his team despite the change in momentum. And as Kelly said, he agreed with him that most of it wasn't self-inflicted, that he thought that North Texas defense had just stepped up a little better. Also, Seth Luttrell telling his team, hey, there's 30 minutes left. Give me everything you got. We got this. I asked him what he needed to see out of Mason Fine to know that he was confident and the moment wasn't too big. And he said that second quarter proved a lot to him. It's a run. On the first play, Tucker with the carry. And we asked Graham Harrell, the offensive coordinator, yesterday, considering the unbalanced offensive play calling in the Florida Atlantic game, will your first play today be a run? And his answer was, oh, I like to pass. <laughs> I like to pass, but timely run. They don't have to run it a ton, but it, it needs to be timely. It needs to be effective when they do run the football. Mason Fine to throw, and Bussy got hit out of his break. Or so thought the tight end Smith who wanted a flag. It's third down. And third down in this first drive of the second half. Third and nine is certainly a, a prototypical pass down. And Troy loves to dial up pressure in this situation. They like to get pressure with four. But when it's a pass down and they, it's dictated a little bit right here. Vic Conan will bring extra people no doubt on Mason Fine. It's the top 15 scoring defense in the country for Troy. Pressure coming. Offensive line holds up, and it's intercepted by Hunter Reese. Troy picks off fine. Reese, the former walk-on, off the deflection from Rooker. Rooker had great coverage on the crossing route. The pressure translates into the need to throw the ball more quickly, and Michael Lawrence was the intended receiver. Rooker had great coverage on that crossing route, which is exactly where Mason Fine should go with the pressure in his face. A crossing route is a blitz beater, but it was well covered, and the ball bounces up in the air, and Hunter Reese is heard from for one of the first times today in this game. First team all Sun Belt performer who's a former walk on and off Troy's second turnover caused. They will run it with Jamarius Henderson on first down. Well, Jason, that adversity that Seth Luttrell mentioned to Chris Button coming back from halftime, you don't want to start the second half with the same thing. That's exactly what happened in the Florida Atlantic game a couple of weeks ago. They were lethargic in the first and third quarters out of the locker room. And Troy, on the other hand, is a great adjustment team. Second quarter adjustment on the year and to start the second half. So North Texas is going to have to hang on here. Silvers wants Willis hand fighting and Willis is inside the five against Jenkins. We probably saw this matchup targeted by Troy about 10 times in the first half. And Willis has won the majority of those against Eric Jenkins. Again a pass play down to the two. Silvers leaning. Touchdown. Brandon Silvers with the score. Turnover to start the second half and then the points off the turnover. And this is a true quarterback zone read. Zone inside, the defensive end jumps up inside, and then it's Silvers keeping it, and he didn't need a whole lot. He's 6'3", 220, not really quick a foot, but he was able to eke out enough on that play. Senior quarterback Brandon Silvers, who opened 11 for 11 here at the Superdome, 
His idol is Drew Brees. He's a huge Saints fan. The previous play was under further review. The ruling on the field was a touchdown. They're going to review this. But with this start in this building, right, somebody needs to contact Drew Brees <laughs> and tell him to get Brandon Silver's phone number. Hey, Drew, are you, are you listening? Do you have something else going on? Are you watching this game? He's got the Jets tomorrow at noon central, so there's some game planning. But... I mean, this young man's played his tail off in your home, Drew. Yeah, and Silvers, does he get in right here? It appears to me that he does. Silvers' knees weren't down. Zone run inside. Quarterback Silvers keeps it outside, targeting that right defensive in for North Texas. This should be a pretty quick review, don't you think? Remember, it's anything but the hand and foot. Has to be down, and then it's wherever that ball is, and neither. I think the foot was down, the hand was down, but there wasn't anything else. I think this is a touchdown. So are you done giving a shout-out toward Drew Brees, or do you have well, more to say? Just trying to help the kid I, I, out, right? That would be nice. And it's interesting that Mason Fine gets compared to Drew Brees, yeah. but it's Brandon Silvers that's been the lifelong Supporter of the After Saints. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. I think that was a no-brainer and a very good job of knowing the goal right there. Not where the goal line was, but to cross it was the goal of Silvers, and that's all he needed to do. Troy's pass game came storming out of the locker room in the first half. And did so again here in the third quarter, thanks to the defense setting them up. The defense takes the ball away, and North Texas certainly didn't want to start this way. And Brandon Silvers has found Willis early and often, and it continues in this first drive of the second half. The Arendelle Carriers New Orleans Bowl. Brought to you by Golden Ocala Golf and Equestrian Club. Luxury living in Central Florida. And the Quicksilver card from Capital One. Earn unlimited 1.5% cash back every purchase, everywhere. When your ball game falls around graduation, graduation comes to you. And that's what happened for Troy and North Texas. Not only football players, but all students were invited if they wanted to, if they were traveling to the game. To graduate here, Rico Bussey on the return for North Texas across the 45-yard line. Strong response. Tyquay Russell finally made the stop. A pretty good answer to at least give North Texas's offense better starting position. And remember, the, this game, I think, coming into this, we knew it, it was going to be about answering those Moments of adversity, which are going to happen in a football game, it's answering back, and now it's North Texas's time to do that. What do you say to your team as a quarterback on the sideline after the defense gives up quick points? Yeah, you basically as a quarterback, you come out and say, hey, we're going to get ours now, and you just have to create that confidence. Nick Smith on the run, second down coming up, and we showed you the graduations. It is a busy time right yeah. now for these teams, considering the new signing day as well. These coaches are working day and night, not only on bowl prep, but also in a couple days, they have to bring in a, a signing class in the new early signing period. Yeah, that that's interesting, and quite frankly, we've talked to a lot of coaches that have no idea exactly how to handle it. There, a lot of them are really flying by the seat of their pants. Mason Fine down the middle for Bussey, incomplete in third down. Kelly, I talked to Skip Holtz, the coach at Louisiana Tech. They have a bowl game on Wednesday. That's the same day as the signing day. So they'll spend all morning in the hotel. They're going to create a war room as if they were back in the offices at Louisiana Tech. He says signing day is exhausting. So think about doing all that. And then, oh, yeah, I got to go coach a bowl at night in the Frisco Bowl. Yeah, that's just incredible. And nobody, Chris, really understands what it all means at this point in time or the best way to handle it. I think they're searching their first time through this, the first time they've had that early signing day. Third down 11 for North Texas at Mason Fine. To 
the sideline and nearly intercepted. Marcus Jones jumped the route. And it's fourth down as he got in front of Turner Smiley. Remember, Marcus Jones is a true freshman. And he's played this way the entire season. Recognizes the route, and he loves to watch tape. And he's kind of next level in that sense. And he recognized the route. He has a middle safety deep to give him some help. Understanding the formation, the personnel, and the route concept. And Marcus Jones, if he could have got his right hand up that time to assist the left, he might have had a big one. He had an assist in the game-winning interception against LSU. That was the main course of Troy's season. But maybe getting a dessert here at the RNL Carrier of New Orleans Bowl. Speaking of dessert, let's see whether or not you caught yourself on fire cooking bananas Speaking Foster. Speaking of next level, look at that look, clown. Look we go to Brennan's after this. Afraid right. For 71 years, Brennan's has been around in the French Quarter, and they invented bananas Foster at the restaurant. So we got to try it last night. Yeah, we got to try it. We got to, to make it. That's a slab of butter, a full half cup of brown, brown sugar. sugar and a, a teaspoon of cinnamon on top and then things burst into flames and you <laughs> bathe the bananas and you throw it all into a pile of ice cream. I mean, what can be wrong with that? Seriously. You did a great job setting Thank it you. on fire the second time. You know, there's, it's unnatural to have things burst into flames right in front of you and you feel it kind of on your eyelids. You did? Yes, absolutely. Well, you were cowering in the corner. What are you talking about? That's what I normally do on Friday <laughs> night. It's just the norm. But that was good. I, To my knowledge, it's the first time I've ever had that, and it was it was epic. You've never had Bananas Foster? I don't think so. Did you play against Barry Foster at least? Yeah, I did do that. But okay. the thing is, is the bananas cancel out the ice cream and that gallon of brown sugar on top so it's actually good for you also Henderson on the run for Troy found some space and he's across the 20 we do want to thank Christian and everybody at Brennan's for their hospitality last night a wonderful meal some great folks and uh, true New Orleans cuisine yeah and that was a, a great atmosphere oh yeah I mean if you want to experience New Orleans it's at Brennan's it's an amazing atmosphere the people were terrific and bananas foster and I am now very familiar with and it's my friend you're <laughs> you befriended dessert I have. okay have you have you texted Barbara your wife to ask <laughs> if she could make it yet She'll get on that, I guarantee you. Local Nebraska ranch burns down in dessert mishap. <laughs> Anderson on the run, just short of the 30-yard line. I did line. not see a fire extinguisher handy. I'm assuming they have those at Brennan's, but we will make sure we have that at, at the ranch if we try that. What a great town for a bowl game, though. No Tremendous food in New Orleans. A wonderful destination. Silvers to the sideline was a little short with it, but Willis came back for him for a first down grab for Troy. And once again, we see that matchup, the out route to Willis from Silvers and Eric Jenkins on the coverage. And did Willis corral that? Yes, because his hands have been incredible all game long. How many catches does he have now? Eddie, 10 for 226 and two touchdowns. I mean, that's incredible. 126 and two touchdowns. This has been a game that has shown wide receivers to be stars in the past. Alan Zay Staggers for Southern Mississippi last year went over 200 yards in this game and clear MVP there. But Damian Willis, an unlikely hero with some injuries to the wide receiver position, including DeAndre Douglas, who was hurt on the opening kickoff this afternoon. Emmanuel Thompson, the leading receiver from a year ago, I think he was second coming into this game, and and he's out. So, yeah, Willis has certainly picked up the slack. Anderson helped pick up the blitz. Silvers delivers. McCormick to the end zone. Touchdown. McCormick just runs a seam and you attack the safety, you get over top of the coverage, 
on you. And you can see right there was intended to be a bracket inside and out. But the speed of McCormick, he gets on top and Silvers delivers a seed right to the chest of number 11, McCormick. What did the coaches tell us? They said he is the guy to take the top off the defense. McCormick does that. And Brandon Silvers, who, if you just joined us, broke Sam Bradford's freshman record nationally for completion percentage his first year in the program is dancing in the streets of New Orleans right now with a very successful final game. And a lot of this is about the the sharpness of Brandon Silvers and McCormick is going to run a seam route. A defender over top of him but help is coming from the inside. You can see McLean the safety is going to work off the hash. Press coverage at the point of attack and then McCormick's going to get up the seam but the, the timing prevents McLean the safety from adequately helping out on that route. Preston, number 27, was the defender chasing McCormick, but Preston was expecting help from the safety inside. The timing of the football prevented that. We saw Brandon Silvers last year. We've seen him now this year. What do you think from Utegear? I think his understanding of the game, use of the eyes, his arm talent is great. Sometimes his feet kind of come and go, and therefore his accuracy does. But he's a guy that can be hot, and right now he's about as hot as you can get. Short kick again to the 25. And Hamilton with his second return of the day. He's becoming Mel Gray in front of our eyes. Week 15 Monday Night Football matchup. It's a big one. Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, and the 8-5 and five Falcons against Jameis Winston and the Buccaneers. Monday Night Countdown starts our coverage 6 Eastern from Tampa. And by the way, Brandon Silvers came out in the same class as Jameis Winston. He was recruited somewhat by Florida State. He was recruited somewhat by Jeremy Pruitt at Alabama at the time is now at Tennessee but he ended up going small school and has turned it into a magnificent career. Back to Mason Fine. Over the middle that's been there all day long and he hits the tailback Johnson. Jason, one of the things you'll love about Silvers is that even when things start to go wrong, his composure stays exactly the same, even after the interception and the high snap. He has kind of that laid back demeanor. We met with him yesterday. It's the exact same way all game. And that experience and maturity means something. The rarefied air of being a four year starter. I mean, you rarely see that anymore at any level in college football in particular. Johnson absorbed the blow on the first down run. Melvin Tyus up from the safety spot with the collision. And North Texas moves the chains. Johnson is finishing the runs, the true freshman, and getting a little bit out of that run game. Coming into this drive, 16 rushes for 15 yards. And Graham Harrell's desire to not be one-dimensional hasn't been there yet today. They rush four and get there with four. He goes down. Seth Callaway was first in. The senior out of Ayrton, Alabama. And Jason, that's exactly why Vic Coning's North Texas defense have been successful this year. They can create pressure with four. Rush four, get pressure with four, bring the quarterback down. We're covering with seven. That's a huge advantage. Seth Callaway, a wonderful story. Basically, his entire family is in the military. He wanted to go into the military, and his brother said, you're going to go play football first. As Mason Fine chucks it down the field, diving try and incomplete, looking for Smiley. to leave after his freshman year his mom got wind of it told the brothers and the, all of the men in his family have all been in one branch of the military and the brothers called him up and he said they told me he'd rough me up a little bit if I decided to leave so he decided to come back stay for the rest of his career he does want to enter the army after he's done with football this year he said he just needs his body to heal a bit it's such an interesting kid to talk to. Yeah. You say kid, but uh, he's as mature as anybody you'll run into playing college football and uh, feels a duty to his country and likely will fulfill that down the line. Mason Fine. Third down and forever. 
He throws across his body and has the tight end wide open at the 41. So Smith gives him a chance on fourth down. And Fine does a great job of really creating all of this by avoiding rush and getting outside the pocket. And Kelvin Smith needed to keep his feet, catch the ball, but stay on your feet and convert right there. He goes down to the ground and picks it up, and now it's fourth and four. Mason Fine on fourth down with a line drive. First down pass. Smith reels it in. And Smith is a big body tight end sitting right over the football. You need a fourth down play. And Smith comes through right there. And you talked about it. Mason Fine does not lack arm talent. And he drives that one home. I think that was a really important time in this game as Troy came out smoking in this second half. How about Kelvin Smith two catches as a high school senior he was a blocking tight end then shows up in college and has had two very nice seasons so far for Troy fine sideline bussy incomplete nice coverage by Cameron Melton and late and underthrown once again there was a double move outside again by bussy and it's the second time we've seen this a great route. Bussy gets on top of the coverage and the ball is just underthrown a little bit. A little bit too much air and the ball was a little bit late. If Mason Fine gets that out earlier, that's once again the potential of a big play. Fine to the sideline. This is a grab for Bussy, but on that previous yeah. throw, we've seen Mason Fine giving ground when there's been no rush. And Graham Harrell told us that that's something that Mike Leach really never taught him is the importance of feet when throwing the football. And you can see that Mason Fine is consistently backing up through that throw and the ball on the other end, remember, is underthrown. And that's the reason why when you're fading away from the throw, it loses steam at the other end. Fine, quick set, sideline, and Smiley gets dumped. But to build on what Graham Harrell said, we asked him if he, he would ever tell Mike Leach that he's working on the feet of his quarterbacks, and he said, absolutely not. He would say, you're wasting your time. This is These were the instructions. Multiple reps in practice and become more experienced, essentially, at running your offense than the defense has covering it, and just throw to the open guy. Well, do you want a three-step drop, five-step drop? I don't care. Find the open guy is basically what Mike Leach taught Graham Harrell. Smith on the run, cutting it up field inside the 10. The Mike Leach coaching tree extends over both of these head coaches, Seth Luttrell and Neil Brown and their staffs, Graham Harrell being on Luttrell's staff, Neil Brown having gone through the Hal Mummy system as well. And uh, they both, both head coaches and their staffs who knew Mike Leach, both said you can watch a game of his right now and you basically know what he's going to call. <laughs> it's the same stuff. But clearly a high reverence for Mike Leach from everybody in this game who knows him. Johnson wrapped up immediately by Barker. And it's third down. And what is the air raid offense that this now Mike Leach coaching tree is getting pretty extensive and it's really a series of pass concepts and then you spread the field and it's it's how you practice and how you teach a quarterback and all of those things and and what I think Latrell coach Latrell and Neil Brown are doing is they're infusing a run game also which is the next step in the progression of this air raid third down for fine Got away for a moment, then lost the football. The offensive line is on top of it. It's the left tackle, Murray. Is Rolling on the field is a fumble recovered by the offense. Fourth down. Now it's fourth down. What do you do? I think you need points right here, and we see North Texas coming out to kick a field goal, but Mason Fine does a great job of avoiding bad ball security, and Murray 
Offensive lineman number 71 jumps on it, but I think it's important to get drives because remember what Troy has done in the second half. Points off the turnover and another touchdown, and and now they've extended that lead to 16 points. I think get points of any kind right here. More an outstanding kicker slices another one from 24. It's a 13-point game. A lot of time left in the first FBS bowl game of the season. All ESPN coverage is streaming live on the ESPN app. Download now and take ESPN everywhere. One on Troy. ESPN app, your best friend. Troy, North Texas, 59 points. The end zone has been under assault so far from the Superdome today. Jason Benetti, Kelly Stauffer, Chris Button, our entire crew in the leadoff position of the FBS Bowls this year. A couple more coming later on tonight the Gildan New Mexico Bowl and the Raycom Media Camellia Bowl. Marcus Jones, the freshman, gets absolutely wow. walloped. And Marcus Jones loves every bit of it. That was Corey Mann with a big old hit as we take a look at today's storylines brought to you by Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. And as you can see, many bowl games coming up. Boise State and Oregon under new management, the Ducks. Yeah, Boise State kind of came back to the pack, I, I think, in the Mountain West, but the result was still the same. They end up doing really well winning that conference. And then Oregon, the tumultuous times, and Taggart is there, and now he's not. And... So it'll be interesting. Colorado State has had some great moments in the New Mexico Bowl, by the way. I thought you were going to say when you were there, they had a lot of great moments. Well, they had a lot of great moments, but in the New Mexico Bowl specifically, Colorado State has had some really nice time. First down for Henderson, who's gotten all to run here in the second half. McLean with the stop. But uh, you saw the, the Raycom Media Camellia Bowl, a new bowl, but the three games have been decided by... 10 points. They have some fun in the Crampton Bowl. Like total in three three outings, right? Yeah, first one was Dino Babers at Bowling Green at the time, now at Syracuse with a late surge against South Alabama, a team you mentioned earlier. North Texas's front gets there quickly on Henderson. And it's third down. E.J. Egeo was there with some help. What's your play call here? Third and short for Troy. Well, you're in a great position. It's third and two. So third and three or less. It's that place you have to be balanced, willing to run it because you can convert and by running the football. But Troy loves to pick up first downs and throwing it really at a two to one pace coming into this game. They score via the run game, but they typically convert via the pass. Two in motion. They both have to set and do. Silvers and that's incomplete. There was some contact, but no flag coming in against North Texas and Tyreek Davis. Tyreek Davis certainly looked like he arrived a little late. The run pass option, zone run inside, you get that overhang defender to step up, you clear the way, and you have a slant, and Tyreek Davis just simply covered the slant well. That one barely got off from Sumter. And Darden watches it check up and bounce around past the 30-yard line. So Troy's defense comes back on the field. And Vic Koning, who has been around the block some, ended up actually in a bowl game as a head coach about half a decade ago with Illinois. Ron Zook was fired. And we've got so many coaches this season with Jimbo Fisher jumping into Texas A&M and Sonny Dykes coming into SMU, going to coach the bowl game. But Vic Koning coached that Illinois team and he said look I'm playing with house money essentially we're going to have some fun the first thing he said to his players when he coached that bowl game was if you are negative if you are negative this is Neil Brown's defensive coordinator we're talking about if you're negative you're not making the trip don't don't film practice we're just going to have some fun and they did they won the game as fine gets his clock cleaned 
Mason Fine gets absolutely doused by Sam Levy, and it's Troy football. Koning's defense gets a big hit. Rolling on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. Fine is down. Christmas time out for injury. He never saw it, I don't think. No, Kel. he didn't. Sam Levy plays the middle linebacker position and comes to the blind side of Mason Fine, actually to the front side of Mason Fine, and just absolutely put the wall up to him. 245, right off the edge, unblocked, right into the grill of Mason Fine. Yeah, he was looking the other direction the whole time. And Troy's defense with another turnover. Fine is down. It was actually Tyler Murray on the hit coming off the edge. They, he plays a, what they call the spear position, which is kind of a hybrid linebacker slash safety position and comes off the edge unblocked. That's the design of what Vic Coning does, is he creates confusion in the blocking scheme. He brings guys from places that you don't expect. The line slid the opposite direction, left Tyler Murray completely unblocked, and Murray just the end man on the line of scrimmage and just rolls the quarterback. Anderson on the run on first down for Troy. Trying to get in the end zone one more time and maybe think about putting this game away as the officials have to separate some folks and a markers come in. That's McCormick. Trying to get Kelly out of uh, harm's way. Yeah, Kirk Kelly at about 310 was right in the middle of the extracurricular after the play. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 41. Half the to the goal and an automatic first down. They get Colton McDonald who had the fumble return for the touchdown earlier. And you can see Colt McDonald coming into the pile late, and you're picking on the wrong guy with Kirk Kelly. He's 300 plus, he's a big man, and they no longer let you kind of peel off the pile as they once did in this game, and I think that's a new rule, fairly, fairly recent change to that rule. Silvers, and Willis got hung up, flag comes in. It's Jenkins against Willis one more time, and they have had a bullseye on his back. This might be offensive pass interference. It looked to me that Damon Willis was actually blocking on the play as if he thought it was going to be a perimeter run. Either that or Eric Jenkins is doing a really bad job of holding right in front of the officials and all but mugging the guy. The human handcuffs. Pass interference, offense, number 15, blocking downfield. 15-yard penalty, still first down. Damon Willis just simply does not know that this is a pass that Brandon Silvers intends to throw to him. That's all about we're going to get an edge run and I'm going to be the lead blocker and Silvers is meantime changing the launch point, getting outside to Willis's direction. Boy, it was a heck of a block, though. It was. Did a great job at the point of attack. Maybe they ought to call the run next time because... Damon Willis had the edge secure. Toss it right. So this is first and goal from the 20 and a half. Silvers, quick hit. And this is big trouble for North Texas. Touchdown, Johnson. We have lost some lights here in the Superdome. Troy has scored so many points. 42 <laughs> that they've shrouded us in darkness. For well, one a of the of staples seconds. of 
the Mike Leach air raid is the screen game. And it's a diverse screen game. That was a tunnel screen with John Johnson coming back inside. It, it looks like total chaos. And then Johnson catches the ball and splits the seam as that blocking wave comes from the outside in, or the inside out. 43-23, Troy with the lead. Remember the Super Bowl a couple years ago, one of the seven Super Bowls the Superdome has hosted. Uh -oh. There was the illumination malfunction <laughs> for a while. So North Texas down three scores. Gave it away offensively. Mason Fine got yeah, Tyler Murray comes unblocked off the edge and knocks the ball loose from Mason Fine. And then the tunnel screen. The offensive lineman released from the inside. They go out and start picking people off, and John Johnson does a nice job of getting that ball into the end zone. How's Mason Fine, Chris? Well, he went into the locker room. They were checking his shoulder. I saw him down here on the sidelines. He was having trouble lifting it above his head, but he just ran back out here. He's got his helmet on. Looks like he wants to play. Throwing which, shoulder, Chris? Yeah, which shoulder yeah, is it, Chris? Yeah, his throwing shoulder. Yeah, that's the one that Tyler Murray teed off on. Another chip shot. And this one goes for some good yardage for North Texas. Hamilton with the return. He's not only Mel Gray, he's Tyrone Hughes as well. Chris Cotter, what do you have? I got a great Clips studio update. We go to Atlanta for the Celebration Bowl. This game was close right down to the wire. You can see final minute. Lamar Reynard for North Carolina A&T keeps it himself. He scores. Aggies get W. 21-14. First MEAC team to finish the season 12-0, guys. How about that? Tremendous season. So the question here for North Texas is how's Mason Fine going to be? He will play, but w what does the next drive after a hit like that feel like for you as a quarterback? You're a little bit tentative. You wonder how that throwing shoulder is going to work. So we'll see how it works out for him right here. It's a throw, and it's down the sideline. A long ball for Bussy, and a flag comes in. It's Dunlap on the coverage. That ball got there, that's for sure. Yeah, exactly, and that's a great way to test his shoulder, and that was one of the better deep balls that Fine has thrown all afternoon. Pastor Ferris defense, number 14, 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Well, Dunlap was on the coverage, and this was all about the release on the line of scrimmage. Rico Bussey gets off quickly, and you can see Fine certainly wasn't holding anything back, and the end result was great. There was the arm bar, bar by Dunlap holding that right hand down of Bussey and correctly called pass interference on the field. Fine under pressure, gets away from Poole and throws it out of bounds. And that certainly has been a theme today, right, Jason? No run running game by North Texas and really any defense certainly Vic Koning's defense for Troy when he knows you're going to throw the football he will bring things that your guys probably haven't seen a whole lot and there have been a lot of free blitzers on Mason Fine even though he avoids a lot he ends up throwing the ball away a lot as well it's been sacked 13 times now the past two games including four today Fine with a dart down the middle. It was high, but it was caught anyway. And that's Jalen Guyton, the Notre Dame transfer. Mason Fine's arm does not look good after the throw. During the throw, it looks great. He's thrown the ball really well, but he lets that right arm hang when he's done unloading it. Play action for Fine. Just barely got his feet set and it's incomplete. 
Jason, after all those sacks that Mason has taken in the last two games, he never appears hurt on the sidelines. I talked to him. He said, I play with a chip on my shoulder. I want to prove to all those schools who didn't recruit me. Remember, Austin P was the only other FBS school that offered him a scholarship. He said, I want to go out there and prove all them wrong. I wake up every morning with that on my brain. I only one D1 offer. You're going to have that lingering. Turned away from the rush and threw a dart for Lawrence inside the 20. First down. Mason Fine, small town Oklahoma, Locust Grove. And boy, is he not in a good way right now. Yeah, Troy defensively is unloading on Mason Fine, the quarterback. And you can see right there his profile. But that chip on his shoulder that Chris talked about really is his motivating factor. Always told that he too small to play the position and he just simply goes out and is ultra productive at every level he's played. Not only did he set those Oklahoma high school records but he's top 10 nationally all yeah. time in pass touchdowns and pass yards in high school. And he's a baller. I mean and, and really he's he's always been on the shorter side playing the position so he doesn't know any better and he has a live arm and he's accurate. His Feet fundamentally are pretty good most of the time, and he's tough as nails. I mean, that that makes for a good player at that position, and he certainly is one. He's seen a lot of pressure today. Fine. Unloads now, and he's too high off the pump fake for Smiley. It was so Bridges on him that time. To yeah, so Bridges out. comes up behind him late and Fine gets the ball off, but he takes the beating nonetheless. Bridges is running the rail around the outside, finally gets around Murray, and Bridges throws Fine to the ground. Last several passes, Fine has ended up on the turf. Guy with the last name Fine getting rocked. Hanging in though. Third down. Roll out again. He throws end zone incomplete. It was Smiley, the intended target. So fourth down, trailing by 20. Will they go for it on the other side? That is the end of the fourth quarter. Mason Fine trying to effect a comeback for North Texas. You're watching the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. What a pleasant city to be in. No, uh, no negative happenings here in New Orleans. You can't have any Where's the anything but clean fun. Bananas Foster. Where's that? That was uh, Can last. We see quarter. that clip again. You know, you have to bathe those bananas just right. I learned that before the combustion takes place you gotta bathe them just right you are addicted you know that would be a good trivia question how long does a banana like to bathe before it's finished <laughs> you're a joke on a popsicle stick now fourth down and four for north texas out of the third quarter break three score game mason fine off his back foot intercepted Picked off by Wesley of Troy. Mason Fine has paid today for not stepping into throws. He did there again. He's falling away from pressure, and I get what that feels like when you're taking a beating. Wesley is in the middle of the field. He's essentially looking at the eyes of Fine, and then it's going to just simply get underneath the route by Rico Bussick, and he takes another pop at the end. By Zoe Bridges once again, Wesley simply is going to stay in the middle of the field and go where the eyes of the quarterback find take it. Wesley does it just right, essentially playing, you know, a center fielder in that case and getting underneath the route in the end zone by Bussey. So Troy off the fourth takeaway of the game for its defense. Now the running back 
Anderson. And we told you about Neil Brown in his third season at Troy. He is the play caller as the head coach. And he told us he fell in love with calling plays as a JV coach. Officials tie him out for injury to a defensive player. As a North Texas player is down. Neil Brown was a JV coach at Sacred Heart. He was an assistant for the varsity team. But on the JV, he essentially was the guy that had to do everything. <laughs> so he walked in with his plays, and he just kind of winged it and said then that's when he really started to adore the play calling aspect. You know, that's what I found interesting in talking with these two head coaches. Seth Luttrell decided just the opposite. When he became head coach, he's going to give up the play calling. He said, I now have to run the team, not the offense. Neil Brown fell in love with the play calling at an early age, and you see his resume right there. Along the way, you kind of learn how to be involved in the game and playing call or calling plays, and it's hard to give that up. We've, we've seen that across the landscape. Um, Bronco Mendenhall, defensive play caller, now at Virginia. Same kind of thing. Let's check in with Chris Connor in the studio. Connor. An update on the Las Vegas Bowl over on ABC. They're underway with Boise and Oregon. Ryan Wolpin is just going to take this quick screen pass and get into the end zone. So it's 7-0 Broncos early on. Coming up next here, cool uniforms for Colorado State. Nick Stevens, Stevens and the Rams taking on Marshall at Gildan, New Mexico. You'd look good in those new uh, Rams jerseys. You sheep? You sheep? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hey, people get new uniforms like every week. That's right. We had like one set, period. That's it? Home and away. That's that's what you get. You rip the jersey, you buy it. That's right. Johnson on the screen for Troy. Slammed on the brakes rather than going for the first down. And it's third down and short. You really only had one uniform. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not kidding you. I don't think that was unusual. It isn't like we lived in the, you know, in the poorhouse in Colorado State or anything. But, yeah, we didn't have a change of uniforms. This is a sneak for Troy, and it does get the first down. I, every every team, it seems like, in their media notes that they hand out to everybody has what their record is in all their different uniform combinations, in purple and black, in polka dot and yellow. You only had the one line in our uniforms. We were this record. <laughs> we were this. I don't even think that was in the... I like in the uh, press release at all. I like that our production crew put up our names right when we were talking about that so they don't get blamed for that. Don't put name my name up, up with his when he's <laughs> carrying on like that. Well done. <laughs> on first down for Troy. Anderson goes down. Troy has not looked terribly worse for the wear without leading rusher Jordan Chun today. No, I think that's where the experience of Josh Anderson and the respect that he has. You talked about that as... You know, really the spiritual leader on the team, and because of his experience, a lot of young players come to him for various things and advice, and and then he actually brings a little more speed to that running back position, and he's 250 pounds, so all of that has been pretty effective today. Career high 105 for Anderson. Silver is down the middle, and it's incomplete. Jenkins on the coverage one more time. How many times have we seen that matchup today? Jenkins trying to cover Willis all over the, the field from the beginning of this game on. Willis, 10 catches for 126, a good majority of that against Jenkins, the senior who is from here in New Orleans. Zach Weldon, the fullback, has checked in for Troy on this third down. And North Texas is right on that play. Brandon Garner got in there, and it's fourth down. That was intended to be more of a gap scheme run, a power run. You talked about Zach Welding coming into the game. He's more of a kind of the prototypical fullback, and it's a two running back concept when he comes in, pulling offensive linemen. Weldon's going to the point of attack as well, but it was blown up early by North Texas.
Darden back to receive this punt, and he's not going to get an opportunity. So North Texas down three scores, needs to rev it up. 23-23, Troy out of the state of Alabama, North Texas from Denton, and North Texas has a bunch of guys that are from the surrounding areas. If you're in the four counties touching Denton, Texas, you're likely going to get recruited. Jalen Guyton is one of those guys, but a number of them. There are four counties, including Tarrant and Collin County. As Mason Fine is back in to throw, and he is running for his life as he dumps it down. But Guyton didn't exactly come directly from Allen, right, Chris? Yeah, Jason, he took a bit of a detour. So after graduating at Allen, he went to Notre Dame. After his freshman year, which he redshirted, he transferred to Trinity Valley College and then spent a year at junior college, which is really kind of in the middle of nowhere, Athens, Texas. The following year is when he came to North Texas, and he told me it was a complete culture shock for him. Smiley, a one-handed attempt, and no good. And for Guyton, you know, playing in the Superdome's got to be strange because he, he comes from a pretty small juco. Small juco, but he comes from a very large high school. So just to give you a perspective of what it's like, this is Allen High School, $61 million stadium. Oof. That's 18,000 people. So now... Fast forward two years, he goes to junior college. He lives in a town that only has 12,000, and the stadium there only fit 4,000. So to, to, he said it learned, he, he learned during that time that what he really loved about football, he said he's been hungrier to play the game more than ever. He's been targeted at least once today, but fine. He can't uncork it. He is sacked. Hunter Reese was in there first, then Kevin Lucky. And Hunter Reese has been the pressure guy all year long for Vic Conan's defense. And but once again, Mason Fine just getting pummeled today. The lack of a run game, one-dimensional offense, and Vic Conan and company are just teeing off on Mason Fine. Rookert on the retreat. Does have a chance to return, and the flag comes in, so we will check the marker before we step aside. How about you go play at a Juco, by the way, on Guyton? 4,000 seems small. I mean, that's only 4,000 as compared to Allen, Texas. We coordinate the flag. During the return, legal block in the back, receiving team, number 27, 10-yard penalty, first down. It's on Troy. The Trojans will have it looking for win number 11 this year. The Arundel Carriers New Orleans Bowl, brought to you by Arundel Business Critical, providing guaranteed and expedited shipping solutions, and AT&T. Frog legs, tuna, po' boys, crawfish, whatever you want here in New Orleans. It's good looking stuff. It's good tasting stuff too. Troy gets it back and McCormick, I, say maybe the top food city in America, New Orleans. We were at Brennan's last night for our shindig and the saber rattling and all the things that Chris did. Yeah. You were just a really happy, Young man, I was. Yeah, it was. It Somewhat was a delightful. giddy, actually, at times. Well, I mean, no, you were downright giddy at times. Well, when you book when in, you weren't afraid, you were giddy. Well, that's right. Well, you almost set the restaurant on fire. But you bookend a New Orleans day beignets from Cafe Du Monde and then Brennan's yeah. at night. I, it's tough to beat. Anderson on the run, third down coming up, and don't forget, coming up next. Another great food city, Albuquerque, New Mexico, the Gildan, New Mexico Bowl, Marshall and Colorado State. Then to Alabama we go, Middle Tennessee and Arkansas State, the Raycom Media Camellia Bowl. Both games also streaming live on the ESPN app. No word on whether or not Anish and Ahmad will have Walter White in the booth with them in Albuquerque. What's the food in Albuquerque that you would choose if you went there? It's a great city. I'm putting you on the spot. There's, what have you What have you eaten that you like? There's there? a tie for first. Got a 
Is that like a Tex Mex kind of place leave or what? The, leave that to them. They got that ball game next. <laughs> It's going to be fourth down for Troy. You're my resident foodie. You've taught me so much. And so I ask you one question all year and you can't even answer it. Ah, we only have one bowl game left together. Fourth down for Troy. You're going to go for it here or what? I'm, I'm not, asking I'm the not questions here. I'm not going to answer your questions either. <laughs> There's a great breakfast place that I went to. I don't remember the name right now. but uh, I think I pawn it. How do you like that? Well, I just punted on your question, so we you agree. You know what? I saw the punt team actually coming on the field when I answered that, but you still haven't answered about food in Albuquerque. Are you Googling it, or what are you doing over there? I'm trying to call a football game, all right? Lay off. <laughs> Sumter to kick to Darden. It's a line drive that goes bouncing. And like Bugs Bunny, this game has taken a left turn at Albuquerque, 43-23. In Albuquerque, you eat in outdoor seating this time of year, anywhere with outdoor seating. <laughs> and get some green chilies, right? That's all it takes. Well, Thanks, Cotter. Chris has at least given me something. It's more than I got here, Mr. Cotter. Mason Fine with the drop off here on first down to Tucker, the running back, as the runners up of Conference USA have the ball, trailing by 20. North Texas with a strong season, nine and four. They were hoping to get to 10 wins for just the third time in program history. First time they did it was 1947. They played in the Salad Bowl. That was actually a game. Are you serious? They did, they played in the Salad Bowl. Lost to Nevada, 13 to six. That wasn't in Albuquerque, was it? It was not. Bussy had it batted away. That's a beautiful play at the last second by Melton. And once again, we see an underthrown ball by Mason Fine, and I totally understand why he's been under duress almost the entire day. And as a quarterback, you tend to throw off your back foot, but great play right at the end by Melton. Sixth pass breakup by Troy today. And about five of them were underthrown balls where there was an opportunity for North Texas to get something going. Fine. Out of the backfield. And that's not going to get the job done. So Tucker is short. It's fourth down. And it looks like they're going to go. Yeah. I would think why not at this point in time. For a lot of these players, it's their final collegiate game. Might as well get a little more run on the offensive yeah, end. I, I completely agree. We haven't heard of, from Michael Lawrence, number 32, here recently either. He's in the slot at the bottom of your screen, closest to the line. Fine. Got it there to Lawrence. He lost the football, though. They call it a catch and a drop on the fumble, but a flag has come in maybe on the hit. Yeah, and I think this could be targeting after Michael Lawrence caught the football. A good job of by Mason Fine waiting for that next window for Lawrence to show up in, and Fine, of course, gets whacked one more time. If this is against Troy, the fumble is non-existent. It's the House of the Rising Sun plays in the stadium. I was just going to say that. I recognize that myself. Troy Band played it at halftime. It was quite a nice rendition. Very timely, topical. Here in New Orleans, with the city being named in the song. So let's check the marker. Lawrence looks like he's all right, which is good news. I think there's a face mask coming against Troy. Rolling on the field was a catch and a fumble recovered by the defense. During the play, personal foul targeting defense number 35. 
15-yard penalty and an automatic first down for North Texas. So they get the Murray on the targeting. Under further review for targeting. And Tyler Murray is going to get called for the targeting eventually, the personal foul targeting. Secure catch, Michael Lawrence makes a football move common with the game and then you can see Tyler Murray coming in, lowering the shoulder and hitting Michael Lawrence right in the head. Well, we are looking for contact to the head or neck area of a defenseless opponent. And it looks like we have it here. Yeah. A receiver in the act of catching the football and just transitioning into the runner, becoming a runner, and then Tyler Murray lowers the boom. And if Michael Lawrence would have transitioned from pass catcher to runner of the football, that would not have been targeted because it wouldn't have been a defenseless player. Question is, will they call him a runner? That's the thing. If, if if it's a called fumble on the field, then he was determined to have, have transitioned from receiver to runner of the football. That's a great point. It almost by definition can't be targeting. Exactly. In that case. Those two things can't go together. Because now I think Michael Lawrence is no different than a running back. And there are collisions in the head and neck all the time as long as you're not striking with the crown of your helmet, which is a completely different category of targeting. And there was no crown of the helmet there, so you need to have the indicator of a defenseless player. And so it looks as though, although, again, when in doubt it is a foul, is also in the rule. So if there's some question over whether or not it was a catch and a fumble, which can also be under review here, they're, they're almost simultaneous reviews. Exactly, because they cannot rule it a catch and a fumble, which means that Michael Lawrence became a runner and have this variety of targeting. So it's either not a fumble or a catch or it's not targeting. Which do you think it is? I think it's... I think it's a catch a fumble and not target it. I think Michael Lawrence had transitioned from becoming a, being a receiver to being a runner of the football into his second step. So it's really tough though. A lot of things are tough. You have, still have to make a call. I mean what is your opinion? I think he stowed the ball away, which makes him a runner. A runner, and therefore it's not targeted. I agree with you, is what I was trying to and say. And therefore it's Troy recovering the fumble, and it's Troy's football. That's, That's right. That's how this should play out. That's the bottom line. So your thought is no targeting Troy ball? Yes, absolutely. I think Michael Lawrence secured the ball, became... A runner of the football and therefore it cannot be targeted. Targeting should be pulled and the fumble should go to Troy. After further review, we have confirmed that it was a catch and a fumble recovered by the defense. Also, after further review, we have decided there is no targeting on number 35. Therefore, it will be first down for Troy. And the reason it's not targeting is because of what we said. You can't target the runner unless it's the crown of the helmet variety. So the call on the field was actually an impossible thing to have happen. Just to be clear for future plays. That's a really good point. Yeah. Put this on the teaching reel for the season. Right. It, it, there's really no way as Troy basically celebrates a mammoth season for the program trying to get to 11 and 2. But there's no way for those two things to come together, both fumble and targeting on a play similar to that one. If our friend Rogers Redding is at home listening to us, this will be on our on our reel when we begin next season as a teaching point. 
National Coordinator of Officials, Rogers Redding. Very helpful to us as the season goes along. That was a good one. So it's second down coming up after that Anderson run. And Troy, co-champions in the Sun Belt. And here's what's on the menu for the Sun Belt. Western Kentucky, Georgia State is underway. Arkansas State, which played Troy very tough in the closer. And then App State and Toledo in a game that could be very nice. Sneaky good game. The Dollar General Bowl, which will come on December 23rd, just after that signing day. Wasn't that one of our categories? A sneaky good game? The yeah. things that you put announcers' picks on, which I didn't have a lot to do with. But I think that was your your choice for that game. It was. Disenfranchised analyst Kelly Stauffer was just talking about these uh, hot topics around college football and the sneaky good game being absolutely Oh, there you go. Yeah. See? It says announcer picks. We collaborated. Good job. My sneaky good game to see how little collaboration there was is actually the Hawaii Bowl. Really? Yeah, I think Fresno State and Houston. I think Houston's story through the hurricane and and Major Applewhite taking over there. And and then Jeff Tedford, Fresno State. I mean, taking them from ground zero to a very productive year in the way they Troy. did it in the clash of their first styles out of the as well. 30 seconds in length. Timeout, Troy. We'll step aside. The Trojans trying to put it away. Troy up by 20, back-to-back 10-win -back seasons for a program that has a D2 title under its belt and also an NAIA championship. On third down, Silvers to the sideline, drops it in for McCormick. Willis, the guy that has been catching all of the footballs, Runs a skinny post inside, and McCormick run, runs a wheel route. Another staple of their air raid offense, and McCormick, from his slot position, goes outside and then up. I mean, that is air raid, Mike Leach, Hell Mummy, Troy Franklin all over it. The wheel route outside to McCormick. Silvers to throw with a dart to the end zone. So the senior has another touchdown to Willis. My math is right. Is that the 11th catch for Willis? Sure is. He had 19 in 12 games coming into this one and one short of an even dozen. The run pass option, the fake of the zone run inside, invite that second level, clear the window for Silvers, and then it's just like stealing candy. Throwing the slant to Willis. Extra point to make it 50. As we check in with Chris Cotter. All right, guys, our big bowl kickoff on the day continues next on ESPN. Ryan Yurchek and the Thundering Herd taking on Kelly's Rams. They'll start this game on ESPN News. As soon as you guys wrap things up there, we'll move it here to ESPN 2. We may have some more points for you before then. 50 to 23, your score. And Brandon Silvers, uh, here's a young man who's in his senior season, has helped the resurgence of Troy. Today, he's 24 for 31 for over 300 in the building where his favorite NFL That's team awesome. plays. That's why these bowl games matter. Student athletes get to do things like that. It isn't all about the college football playoff, although I love that as well. It's guys like Silvers getting to play in places like this. We still need to make sure that Drew Brees gets him on the horn at some point. It's a huge Drew Brees yeah, fan. Yeah, that would be nice. I thought Drew would have called you by now. Word would have gotten out here in New Orleans that you were trying to reach him. Well, just on behalf of Brandon Silvers, who goes by his middle name, actually, William Brandon Silvers, with a big day as this kick goes bouncing around just across the 20-yard line. Hamilton one more time as we take a look at today's Capital One player of the game. Next man up, Mr. Willis, due to injury, has had a mammoth day.
Well, Brandon Silvers found Damian Williams early. That was a matchup, obviously, that Neil Brown liked, the play caller, the head coach of Troy. Matched up on Eric Jenkins. Many of these highlights are on 15 Troy on number two, North Texas. And Damian Willis had his way in most of those. And he had a hot quarterback dishing in the football, which doesn't hurt either. Silvers, four touchdowns, two to Willis. 11 of the 24 completions to Willis. As Johnson meanders to the 49. But two coaches who you may hear the names of yeah. in the coming years, both under 40 and both with resurgent programs. Seth Luttrell for North Texas, Neil Brown on that Troy sideline. Flag comes in. Oh, I think in a lot of ways, Jason, that's kind of the template that athletic directors across the country are using. Don't pay for the education for young coaches. Let them get it in the group of five, and then we go pay them more money than the group of five can afford and bring them up. Neil Brown and Seth Luttrell are building programs in a Personal way that's foul, repeatable. Foul, in ways, crack back block, number 84 in the offense. 15-yard penalty, still second down. So if you were founding the Stauffer's search firm for coaches, these are the types of guys you would look for. Yeah. Guys that do it the right way, and they have an offensive scheme that's exciting and young players want to come and play in it. And then they get some traction on the defensive side as well. In some cases, kind of a mirror image of what they're doing offensively and the way that they're aggressive and create negative plays defensively and those kind of things and and guys that I think are in the process of proving they can do it wherever they would be asked to do it. Mason finds sacked again. Baron Poole this time. And again, Troy beat LSU earlier this year. If you didn't hear us yeah. say it earlier in the game, that was on September the 30th and derailed the Bayou Bengals for a while. And Neil Brown does a great job of calling plays offensively, but Vic Coning on the defensive side has had a tremendous year. He also has something really good going at Troy. Calls it the Fire Ant Defense. I love that name. If you've ever stepped into a mound of fire ants, you'll know that they do a very good job of swarming. And I was going to test that on you headed over the stadium. We don't have them in the Midwest, but they do have them down here in Louisiana, and I was going to get you to step in the middle and see how quickly they swarm to your little ankle. Nobody really feels a holiday cheer until you say, if you've never stepped in a mound of fire ants, <laughs> fine on fourth down. They're typically red. Throws it to Tucker, trying to search for that first down and a strong run across midfield for North Texas. And Mason Fine has a lot of football to, to play, and he's going to be fun to watch. Is he spends the next couple of years playing for Seth Luttrell. Pistols timeout for an injury to a defensive player. Defensive player. By the way, tonight on Sports Center, take a look at the Chiefs Chargers impact from tonight. Carmelo Anthony with some words for Joel Embiid recently. And the top 10 plays from college football this season. It's all on Sports Center, 11:30 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. What's the best play we've seen in person? I, do you think? I was trying to think of that before you asked me the question. I, I'm not sure. Do you have something in mind? Well, I think the way we started the season, watching Iowa State, Iowa, there were some big plays. That that run by Akram Wadley in the opening game you and I did together. Oh, yeah. Ran that down. Could be, we set the play clock at 25 seconds, please. Thank you. That could be up there Injury for sure. an offensive player. Tucker down. And now up getting some help from the training staff. North Texas is going to fall one win shy of that 10-win plateau. Troy going to get to 11. Hate to see this for Tucker. Raycom Media Camellia Bowl coming up later. The Gildan New Mexico Bowl is just about underway. 
And that game starting on ESPN News with Marshall and Colorado State locking horns. Fine. Down the field and incomplete for Jalen Guyton. There is a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Mason Fine just a sophomore. Neil Brown in his third season, 37 years old, ready to celebrate and keeping an eye out for the game. Holding Gatorade. defense of the running back, 10 yard penalty, first down. First down, North Texas, Chris Cotter. All right, Jason, you mentioned the Gildan New Mexico the Bowl. Here we have it on the right. It's starting on ESPN News, Marshall in Colorado State. We'll move it right over here to ESPN in a minute and 52 seconds as soon as you guys wrap things up from New Orleans. We'll get it there as quickly as we can. But there's a flag. Very little penalized team. North Texas has seen that number grow today. Outside, defense, number 30, with contact, five-yard penalty, still first down. With contact is necessary because that's what stops the play. If it was just offside without contact, you'd give North Texas the free play. You can take that discussion of offsides to your holiday table. I'm sure it'll be riveting conversation. Very, very well said. <laughs> Thank you. Fine under pressure. Flag comes in again. And he chucks it out to the tailback, Johnson. Holding, offense, number 71, 10-yard penalty, replay first down. Jordan Murray, the left tackle. This is the type of game that typifies bowl season. You have, <laughs> you have two offenses that are just going to town and at some point it gets a little bit ragged but you get to see some of the programs you may not have heard of if you're just watching power five games and two great young coaches I what wondered, are you laughing at i wondered where you were going with three yellow hankies in a row but you finished that stuck the landing yeah you you did that fine got rid of it that's batted down flags everywhere that's four in a row. You jinxed us. They're going to get intentional grounding here or illegal touch maybe by a lineman. You might get targeting it all out assault on Mason Fine once again. And unless there was a holding where the offensive lineman didn't hold very field well. Was an incomplete pass. Personal foul, rough in the passer with targeting. Defense. Number 50, the previous play is under further review. So with a quarterback being a defenseless player, the only question is the contact to the head or neck area. And so Bridges, number 50, was running the rail around the edge, and I do think Zoe Bridges makes helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact, which constitutes that forcible contact above the shoulders and the head, head and neck on a defenseless player, which a quarterback throwing the football is just that. So you think targeting and Zoe Bridges will have an early curtain? Yeah, does that penalty carry over into next season? If Zoe Bridges yes. is still eligible, which he is as a sophomore. Yes. As I recall, yes. What would happen if you're a senior and you get the targeting penalty in the fourth quarter of your bowl game? Do you get suspended for the first half of your job? Yeah, that's exactly what happens. You don't show up for work for the first half of the day. Well, Bridge is going to be in charge of starting the celebration in the locker room in that case because there's only a buck 30 to go. 
And credit Troy. I mean, this is not a slouch of a North Texas team at nine and four. North Texas, by the way, will start next season with a game against SMU and Seth Luttrell's good friend Sonny Dykes taking over there. After further review, the one on the field of targeting is confirmed. Number 50 is disqualified. 15-yard penalty and automatic first down. And Jason, one of the things that the officials can do, they have the ability to essentially not call some things down the stretch if it really doesn't figure into the outcome of the game. But where player safety is concerned, that never happens. You always have to call what we just saw. And Zoe Bridges certainly wasn't intending to do anything, but he ran the rail and, and he certainly rightly got called for targeting. Find the check down to Johnson. And if you're wondering why intent wouldn't matter, it's because in the rule as it's written, they're trying to protect players so much that intent can't matter. You no. want to make sure you can call it in every situation. Targeting, that is. Mason Fine down the middle has a strike to the 16 and Smiley throws to his senior. And don't forget, on ESPN3, the postgame trophy ceremony presented by Capital One immediately following the game. You can join us for that on ESPN3. Gildan New Mexico Bowl is on the way on ESPN. And a nice shiny trophy for the RL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. Fine. Incomplete. How about Neil Brown for Troy? Third season, back-to-back 10-win -back seasons. And we asked him what uh, he thinks of people calling him an innovator. And his response was very interesting. He said, sometimes when they call you an innovator, it means you're a little short on talent. <laughs> but he doesn't feel like this team. You, are, you, my friend, are an innovator. I am. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Backhanded compliment as Neil Brown has sentries posted for the Gatorade bath. He's a little concerned. Fine down the middle has Smiley and a good finish for the senior out of Frisco, Texas. Turner Smiley with a touchdown late in the fourth quarter. And that was well done. And obviously early in this game, there wasn't enough of that. But Mason Fine stands in there, transfers his weight to his front foot, and rips this ball into Smiley. So Trevor Moore trying to stay perfect for his college career in extra points. And he does. Now Mason Fine, Jason, has been under pressure most of the day. And watch the transfer of weight from his back foot to rip the football to his front foot. And the result is a really good throw on the other end to Smiley. And there just wasn't enough of that. But remember, a lot of times... Mason Fine had pressure in his face, and trust me, as a quarterback, it's hard to finish if you have guys that are bearing down on you. And a nice route by Turner Smiley, you talked about it, is the senior from Frisco, Texas. He's going to finish his career with a touchdown catch. Had the 77-yard touchdown tied for the longest play of the year for North Texas. Smiley did against FAU in the Conference USA Championship. And for Mason Fine, a very proud young man, had a recruiting situation that was a little thin on offers. As Chris mentioned, Austin P, his only other Division I offer, part Native American, very proud of his heritage from Oklahoma, and he'll be fun to watch as the years go on. Some big games for him next year with SMU and Arkansas on the schedule for North Texas. And they decline on the onside kick and boot it deep. So one more kneel down for Mr. Brown and Troy 
to win 50 to 30 in the 2017 RL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. How about the job he's done? And his quarterback in tow along with him. Yeah, now what Neil Brown, the chore ahead of him, is he's had an experienced team the last two seasons, and they've won a lot of games, and then you're going to lose a lot of talent. I mean, you can just start with Brandon Silvers as the first guy. When you lose that production, a four-year starter at that position in particular, there's an enormous void in quality reps. And so Neil Brown now has a different task ahead of him to maintain the momentum in this program. He's going to get younger starting in 2018. Brandon Silvers takes that knee. Neil Brown gets doused. And the Troy Trojans win 11 games, 21 wins the last two seasons. The class of the Sun Belt wins by 20. What a game. High scoring, 80 points on the board. We say so long from New Orleans. For Chris and Kelly, I'm Jason. Out to Albuquerque, the Gildan New Mexico Bowl. Marshall and Colorado State. Anish Schrock, take it away. Games with a catch for Juracek. That ties a score.